Hey, so how are you guys doing? My name is Neil. This is my fiance. Hi, I'm Samantha. And I'm going to be showing you guys the most basic fundamental stuff you need to know to survive in your like, you know, first six months of, of Jiu Jitsu. This is the knowledge that you won't find anywhere else. Like I've looked all over the internet and it looked for like free ebooks or paid ebooks or paid things or YouTube and you just don't find this stuff. You'll find a plethora of, of information on how to get a choke, how to get an arm bar, you know, um, how to transition from, from how to sweep and all this kind of stuff. But none of that's going to help you as a beginner. You need to understand the most basic fundamentals of Jiu Jitsu first. So we'll, we'll, I'll show you different ways to take the back in a second, but I just want to show you what it is. This is another position you'll find yourself getting into. You're flipping, you're rolling around. You might not even know how you got into it, but the next thing you know, you're in this position right here. They have their, their hooks in between your legs, and um, if they're not smart, they might actually have them locked, but you don't want to lock your legs. It's just straight down like this, feet open, and straight down to the ground. You want to point your toes to the ground, and you get over under the underhand, this is the overhand. No, this this is called under because it's coming under her. It's coming under her arm. This one's going over her arm. And it's also called the seatbelt. The one that's under right here, under her arm, grabs my wrist. Boom, like that monkey grip. Monkey grip means my thumb is going over, over. I mean, you see. Her. So right now. This is when you want to spend your energy. You don't want to spend your energy. You want you don't want to be relaxed here and just let them plow right through you and pull you into and pull you in and then you're here and then they pull you into guard. Because then now you have to work on, on using so much more energy to get your head out. So let's say wrap the head around tight. You have to worry about get your head out here, get your head up, strip off your arms, get your hands on their hips, stiff arm, and this and that's what we're gonna go through. So this video is for anyone that is already in Jiu Jitsu right now and you just feel like you're just you're just getting arm barred left and right or choked out and, and all this kind of stuff and it's just you just feel like you're just getting beat up and maybe you even want to quit because of it. This is gonna help you to understand what's going on, how to stay relaxed and calm and so forth. Now I remember um, I went to this purple belt and uh, I was one of the Ten Planet uh, Jiu Jitsu and I went to this purple belt and I said, Hey, um, what's the number one piece of advice you'd give me? And he said, the number one piece of advice I would give you and I wish I'd give myself is he said, if I could rewind time back to when I first started Jiu Jitsu, he said, I wish I would have spent my whole first year or even a whole first two years doing nothing but working on my defense, how to defend myself and not get submitted. And I was like, wow, that's coming from a purple belt. And it takes a long time to get that purple belt. And I'm like, that's, that's really interesting. And I took that to heart and um, I actually heard that advice from from a few other people like like uh, Hina Gracie. And it's super important to know how to defend yourself and how to stay calm because you know what's happening around you. Because if you're calm, you can sense the slightest little movements of the, of the person's body. And if you understand what they're doing, you can know how to defend it. Now, I can't obviously teach everything they're gonna be doing, but I'm gonna teach you the most fundamental stuff so that when you're against another white belt, most likely that's who you'll be rolling against. You might roll against a blue belt. If you ever roll against somebody other than a white belt, be sure actually, Right away when you go to roll with someone, this will help you a lot as well. Be sure to say, hey, you know what, I'm really new to all this, and all I really know is defense. I don't really know that that very well. I just want to work on my defense. Do you mind? Is that okay? I don't know a lot of submissions. Right. And so you're just trying to work on your defense. That immediately puts them to the role of teacher, and they're more likely to, to help you doing what you're trying to do, rather than them just trying to smash on you. So if you're just like, hey, you want to roll? They, they, they might take that as, oh, this white belt thinks he's somebody and just try to smash you and, you know, just try to really work you and get you into a lot of bad positions and you're sore the next day. It really sucks. But if you approach them in a different way, it'll really help you get more out of the session. Because if you have no idea what's going on, you're just rolling around and you're just doing stupid stuff because you don't know what you're doing. You're not learning anything. You're not developing. You're not moving anywhere. All you did is got beat up. Yeah. And you know, and you might slowly learn something like, hey, maybe I should stop putting my head right there because every time I do, I get choked. Um, you learn little things here and there. But this knowledge you're gonna learn in this video is gonna teach you how not to be that person. How not to, you're not gonna seem like a beginner. When you get into class, 
when you and, and you go through all this and, and learn these basics, this basic information, it's going to teach you how to defend yourself so much better that you're not going to seem like that that total begin maneuver that does have no idea what he's doing, like leaving his arms out there to be grabbed and, and arm barred and, and arm barred and things like that. So I know kind of a long introduction. So then back to who this is for. This is for anyone, like I said, that is in jiu-jitsu right now and they don't want to just keep getting submitted all the time. You need this information. They don't teach this to you anywhere. Like I haven't found it anywhere. And I've, you know, go to, if you go to a different, and, I, and we have, even the Gracies say, hey, when you go to our academy even, they're like, we don't have time for every new student to come in and teach them the, the most basic fundamental stuff. So basically when you come into class, you're learning whatever they're learning. If they're drilling arm bars, that's what you learn. Okay, time to roll. What, you, don't, you don't know anything about jiu-jitsu, all you know is how to do an arm bar, and you probably don't remember how to do that right, and then now you're rolling with someone, you have no idea what you're doing, so you're flipping, you're flopping, you're rolling around, no idea what's happening, you're getting choked, you're getting arm barred, and like, ooh, that was fun, you might never come back again. Most people that join jiu-jitsu, um, according to statistics, don't last the first six months. So this will hopefully help you be one of those people that do get past that six months. The other person is for is obviously for that person that hasn't joined Jiu-Jitsu yet. Hopefully this will make you want to join Jiu-Jitsu. It's also especially for those that have joined Jiu-Jitsu and you were one of those people that quit. Hopefully this video will help you come back to Jiu-Jitsu because now you understand at least the fundamentals and be like, hey, maybe I'm going to give that a try again. Maybe, maybe you know, this will help me out now. I'm not going to, you'll feel like, hey, now I'm not going to get submitted all the way. Now, of course, the best thing to do is try to find a partner, a girlfriend, a friend, a roommate, you know, a brother, a sister, a family member, a cousin, anybody that you can say, hey, can you just like work with me a little bit? I need to drill this stuff. And it won't take you very long to drill the things I'm going to be showing you. Right, okay, so that's that. Now, the first thing is that you need to know about jiu-jitsu is what is jiu-jitsu? What, what, what is the whole purpose of jiu-jitsu? The, the point of jiu-jitsu is, at least for sport jiu-jitsu, and that's what you're going to be doing when you're going to into one of these uh, gyms, unless you're going to like maybe a, a gym that's specifically jiu-jitsu for, for street application, uh, for, for fighting application. I'll be coming out with a course on that, on Udemy, that's to be all about that. So if you're, you're all into that, then just uh, sign up to, I guess, one of my newsletters, or just, I don't know, <laughs> you'll see it, because I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a piece of it on, subscribe to this channel, whatever channel you're watching this video on, subscribe to the channel, and when I come out with the course, I'll have a, a little trailer for it. And uh, it's all going to be about jiu-jitsu for street application. And it's different than anything else that you've seen out there before. Very, very practical. Um, been a lot of street fights in my life. I'll get into that into the course. But anyway, so sports jiu-jitsu, what's important that there's four major positions that the, your opponent is trying to get you in. And the reason why they're trying to get you in those positions is so they can submit you. Because those positions make it the, the easiest for them to submit you in. So what Jiu-Jitsu is all about is attacking the neck, choking them out, either by pressing pressure on their trachea with like a guillotine choke, which would be like coming underneath here and then pulling up. And so it's like this here and you're pulling up with this blade of your wrist against their trachea and it hurts really bad if you actually press the trachea that way. And of course tap right away. Especially if you're a new person, don't try to fight and get out of it, just tap. There's no reason to hurt yourself. Um, one time, you know, I, I, I decided to, to hold, I knew how to get out of it, so I thought I could, and I, I just went too long, and I did manage to get out of it, but for like a week, it felt like um, really bad strep throat, like every time I swallowed, and it sucked. Um, so it's, it's just a really bad pain. Um, so it, was it worth it? No. If it was a tournament, sure, it would have been worth it, but just for sparring, not worth it. So they get, they get it, just tap, let go, no ego, don't worry about it, and then keep going. Yeah, or my rib. I hurt my rib one time too, really stupid. That was for a while though, it would hurt you. Yeah, yeah, and so if you if you feel like you're in a position that, you know, and you're gonna get hurt, just, just hey, you know, can we, can we reset? You, you, you got me, it's good. There's no, 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 nothing wrong with that, you're trying to learn. And if you don't, you know, go slow at first with someone, you're not gonna learn anything. You're just gonna get thrown all around and not know what happened and you learn nothing. Right, so the other thing is to attack the arms, whether it's with, um, Arm bars, which pushes the joints the opposite way they're supposed to go. So the elbow is not meant to go this way, right? So when you push this pressure up on it, it really hurts. And uh, tap to that right away. When someone gets you that and you don't want to get out, don't even try it, just tap. There's no, re there's no reason to have your arm hurt. Now, if they're, they're smart, they're, they're, they're going to be gentle and slowly put the pressure on. 
and be like, hey, are you going to tap yet? Like, you know, so make sure to let them know you're, you're totally new. And then when you begin the arm tee to go like back this way the wrong way, which would be Americana, which twist in here and actually cause the whole arm to pop out of its socket, or to twist back this way, which is like a, a Kimura, or on a plot if you're using your leg. Same thing, it just causes the arm to twist back that way. Other ones are like different kind of key locks, like the cop move, where the elbow here and here, and you push pressure between these two areas, and it causes a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And one way, there's different ways you get, like one time you can get their, you can get their hand like this trapped if they grab onto your hip, whatever, you get their hand trapped your hip, and you can grab their arm here and just pull pressure. There's different ways to get into that move, but it, it is a move you can get into. Other ones are, are, are wrist locks. Usually wrist locks aren't allowed, especially, you know, for white belts, but uh, just know that, you know, the wrist can, you know, be bent the wrong way, and, and that, that can cause a lot of pain. There's different ways to get wrist locks. The other one is a tackle the ankle. So leg locks usually attack the ankle in some way and usually cause pressure here in your knee because they're going to cause the foot to twist the wrong way here as they're locking this down or they're trying to cause it to twist back this way. I'm very flexible so it's really hard for this one to work on me. So if they get that one like this and they're pushing it back, you usually have to twist it at the same time causing all this in here to hurt and just tap to those. Don't, there's no reason to sustain energy, you know, you know, it's just you're trying to learn, you're not trying to get hurt. Uh, maybe during a, a match, you really think you can get out of it, you know, but that's going to be down the road. You don't want to go and join a match. You want to do jiu-jitsu for at least six months before you go do any sort of tournament, even if it's a beginner tournament. Um, so, yeah, so basically they're trying to attack your legs, your arms, your neck. Those are the main things they're trying to submit you. They're trying to get you to submit. That's the whole point. Unlike wrestling where it's like you're just trying to pin them to the mat. And so if you come from a wrestling background, don't feel like you can't be in your back because in jiu-jitsu, your back position is one of your dominant positions. There's a lot of different submissions you can get to from, from the back. Okay, now that we know that those are the main positions that are going to be trying to get us in, let's just go ahead and look at, well, those are the main things that we're trying to do to us. Let's go through the four major positions you'll find yourself in that they're trying to get you in so they can get one of those types of locks on you, one of those types of submissions on you. What this video is not going to show you is a bunch of transitions from one to the other, a bunch of submissions, all that's already on YouTube. But I will show you a basic drill that you absolutely should do, and every beginning just you should do this, but they, they don't, and it's because they don't have time for every person. They know that most students come in, they give you a free month anyway. They know most of those people aren't going to even come back. They might not even make it through the, the first free month. They already know that, so it's, it's a waste of their time to try to teach you this basic stuff. And um, for, for me, it's not, though. And I, and I, I think this... Like, when I go to jujitsu, jitsu and I'm like, see a new person come in, I just feel so bad, so I'm like, that person knows nothing about jiu-jitsu, and they're just going to throw them in and let them roll with somebody, and they're, they're not going to learn nothing from it, except for, that really sucked, I didn't like how that felt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, it, sh it should be something that you learn right away. They should have, like, maybe one person, one more, like, a slightly more advanced student, or even, even, even if he's a white belt, as long as he understands the basics, he's learned this information I'm about to teach you, that I am teaching right now, that you can take that student aside and just, and just real quickly run it through them. Or go, hey, you know what? Before you start class, we want you to go and watch this video. Like a video like this one. Make a video like this one. Like, we just want you to go watch this video. Or right now, real quick, you know, go watch on your phone, whatever. And, and then, then come back tomorrow to class. They're more likely to stay. So jujitsu guys out there, if you're watching this video, feel free to use it for that purpose or make your own like this and show the most basic stuff so your students stop leaving. You'll have a higher you know, rate of, of people staying if they know the basic stuff first. Right, so the four positions are these. Let's go and go through them. So the first position is, um, dominant position would be the, the mount. We'll, we'll show how to get into it in, in a second. And then we'll also show how to get out of those positions because that's really important too. And then, and then we're, we'll, we'll show that too, but let's just show the four, the four major positions. And then I want to show you also your three major defenses when someone is smashing on you. And I'll show you what I mean by smashing. So, full mount position is, it looks like this here. So if it's when they're on, on you like this, they usually gonna have their hooks in, and hooks in mean your legs are coming in between your legs like this here. Sometimes they'll spar your legs up like this. Most of the time, if, if they're more advanced, and, it, and it's better, they're gonna take their toes and point them straight towards the ceiling. Their hips are going to drive straight down. Now, the reason why I'm explaining each position and, and how to get into it properly is, one, now you know what they're trying to do to you and why they're trying to get that position and what their goal is. 
Two is because you're going to want to try to get to one of these positions, and so it's good to know how to do it properly. So when you're in this position, you want to take your hips, you want to drive your, all your weight should be here in your hips, not in your arms. In fact, you should go just like float through the, put a little pressure on me, hold me up just a little bit, and with your arm, okay? Yeah, great. So you should be able to just float like this on top of them, because all your weight, all your weight is on there. <laughs> all your weight. Okay, not good. Not good. Just so watch. She's gonna use her elbows real quick. Yeah, now normally she would have to do this. I was like this. Oh. <laughs> normally she wouldn't have to do this, right? This is her. She's like, I'm like she use her elbows. Her elbows not just like laying and relaxed. Oh. So you're gonna hold your weight. My my power weight right here now. See that? Yeah, it helps a lot more than just going. Yeah, this takes no. This takes no energy. It's like a stick. This is like, it's like a stick right here. <laughs> and just holds my weight there. Now normally she wouldn't have to do this if she were like more this. my size, but. I'm like twice her size, so I'm really small. me really smashing my weight over is not a good idea to do it. So if I, you should be able to just lay on the person like this without them, so without them framing. If she doesn't frame them, I'm going to be smashing like her boobs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that helps a lot more. Right? I can talk without So all your, all your weight should be here on their hips. You're trying to pin their hips down. Now the next thing after the hook is go ahead, okay. is getting an arm underneath their neck. This is how they recommend it. Arm underneath the neck, one arm stiff arm out. Hooks in high towards the ceiling. Right here, boom. This is the hard position to get out. So if they try to twist you, your hooks go in. So this is the position they're trying to get you in. Now the reason why they're trying to get in this position is one, for example, if they make the mistake of let's say trying to push on this hip here, and I can grab this wrist and I can pull it out, and I can slide to the ground, I can hold it here. Now I can slide it here, and now it's hard for her to get her, her wrist out. I'll show you this, this is Americana. I can feed her this hand here and hold it, get my hooks and keep her down, she can't move. Slide my hand underneath here, boom, monkey grip, monkey grip. Then all I have to do is quickly put my, wait for her to turn, try to do anything, and then, and then hold my hooks in, and then get my head, my arm around her head, and put it back here, and then pull it down to my knee here. And then this, this hook right here goes in deep, this opposite hook, so the opposite leg, the opposite foot to my hand here. I'm gonna pull my down here, and I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin her hand to the ground. Oh, it hurts. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide her hand down and lift my shoulder up. And that causes a lot of pain right in here. And just tap to it right away. There's no reason to go through much pain. Those are awful. So that's just one one reason. Another reason why would be if they try to like push up here the arm bar, all like day. that. And I, <laughs> if I can grab an arm here and pull up, I can push on their chest here. Now, of course, if they um, are female, this might feel awkward and weird. So if you feel awkward rolling with a female, just know that they, they are thinking that you're feeling awkward. Yeah. And they're there to wrestle and to roll. Most women in jiu-jitsu have no problem rolling with guys. If you see them rolling with other guys, it means they have no problem with it. And they're going to be used to you know, you're putting pressure on their chest here. And so they're going to put the pressure on the chest here. They're going to put all their weights and be on the chest as they come up and around and trap by trapping this arm inside here like this. I'm not putting my pressure on it right now. I'm going to come around here. And then from here, I'm going to swing my foot all the way around. I'm going to have some pressure on my leg here a little bit, but actually I'm going to keep my knee in tight. Some pressure is going to come around this way as I come around. I'm going to actually come boom. Then I can lay my foot like this. And I'm going to sit on her body. And as I sit on her body, I'm going to slide down. So I'm like that way, that way this is really tight to me. And then I'm going to take the arm and pull it back here, holding with a baseball grip for their elbow can't come up. I don't want to pull it this way because then it's like that. Instead, I'm going to pull it toward my, my other side, this side over here. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to get myself tight. I'm going to pinch my legs against her body tight this way. That is down this way. I'm also going to put my feet toward the ground. So if she tries to set up, she can't. Right? And then I'm going to pinch my knees together so she can't get her arm out. And then I pull and I lift my hips up. And it makes the arm hyperextend. So that's another move they might try to get into. Anyway, that's just a quick overview. That was it. There's, there's tons of videos out there learning how to drop arm bars that are closer, you can see better. I'm just showing you that they're, from that position, there are, there are many attacks they can get on you. And so that's just a couple of them. The next position, since we're right here, is a side mount. So typically it's, traditionally it's a knee against the, the shoulder area and a knee against the hip area. And then 
to hold this person down and you can keep them from, because one thing they're gonna try to do most, and this is what, as a beginner, that you might feel you might wanna do, and as a beginner, you should never do this, is they start turning away from me. Because sometimes, boom, right away, I'm gonna start taking their back, okay? So don't roll away from your opponent. Now there are advanced ways to roll away. I'm not saying that you'll never do it. Go back on the other side, Jordan. Yes. Yeah. So there are advanced reasons to roll away, but as a beginner, you don't want to be doing that yet. So you, you're going to be trying to probably turn toward them. One of your main defenses they're going to, they're going to have up is, uh, hold on. No. One of their main defenses they're going to have up is this right here. Oh, yeah. They're also going to try to turn on their side toward their opponent a little bit. Right, like that. Now I'm going to come here, and I'm going to come under, and like this. So I'm under one arm, and I'm here, and all my pressure is tight on them, and I have them tight here. This elbow is keeping them from turning away from me, or from even turning into me. If I keep all my weight smashed down, try to turn into me, like shrimp up. It makes it really hard for the shrimp out. I'll tell you what the shrimp out is in a little bit. Now from here, there are a lot of submissions as well. There is the same submission here, but they can grab the arm, they can come under, like this, over, grab the arm here, and then since they're from the side, it's really easy to put pressure up here. Uh, all, all they have to do is come out, lay one foot out like this, against their hips, or, or they can just come like this way, okay. but they want to be kind of sideways, you know, and kind of have some weight so they can't get out, and then it's just, and it's really easy. So that's, that's one submission thing to do from the side. From side out, there's many other ones. You know, they can from side, they can get a deep hook from here. They mess around, you mess up, and put their arm around them, and then all of a sudden they grab your arm here, they control it, and they pull it here, and then bam, they switch the hook, and now they got a deep hook on the arm. And this right deep hook right here sets up for an arm bar, so they can actually sit up here and they can come around and quickly come across the head, hold the leg here, and pull you toward them. And as they do that, they can shoot this other leg up and through, and then get an arm bar. So that's one, one form of side control. Did you do that? Let's show side control from this foot like this way. Okay. Uh, my head facing towards the wall over here? Yeah. All right, so let's do it this way. So like this? Your head facing that way. This way. Oh, okay. Okay, so just an idea of what it looks like is here and here to keep them from turning into me. And I'm gonna lay my pressure on them this way and, and I don't want to dedicate too much pressure. I kind of want to keep my pressure kind of even. Wide base here so they can't turn into me. And they also can't roll me over. So if they try to hug me tight, I'll get over and under me. And try to roll me over. I try to roll me over that way. This way, towards the window? Yeah, like that. Put, put that push off one foot and bridge. I'm, I'm staying tight here so I can spot out and now they can't turn me over. So it's, this is a really dominant position. And there's different ways to get into submissions from here. Most people that are be trying from here is to go to go for a, a a full mount. One thing you might do is modify it here and come here. If the person tries to get their knee down flat to the ground, and then their knees are trying to come underneath my leg. And so if their knee comes underneath my, underneath my leg, right there, see there's a little space, and lift my knee up, lift my leg up. Boom, now once they get their leg on here, they can take the other leg and put it in here. I'll even push my stomach. Oh, like this. And shrimp that away from me. And bam, and now they can actually, if they want to, they can get me into, in, into guard. And so then I'd have to try to defend that. So instead, come back, come back over. So another thing you do then instead is if you feel that happening, let's go straight here. This is also another really strong. This leg stays out flat and hard on the ground, and this leg stays here like this for proper control. So you have really good control right here. And from here you can do different, different, um, Submissions, and then they might, they might even come like this here. And this is another modified side mount. And lift you up. And um, from here, they can actually do this one uh, chest compression. A lot of people have seen it before. Let's go back that way a little bit. Yeah. A lot of people have seen it before on like metamorphs and things like that, and they didn't understand why. They thought the person tapped, they thought it was, they thought it was a neck crank, they thought, they thought it was pulling on the spine right here. But actually, if you're in this position, and I lay all my weight of against her rib cage. So I take my side and I put it all the way across her ribs right here, really tight. And then I pull up on the head as I'm pushing down at the same time. It's 
stomach crusher. It makes it really hard to breathe. It's a stomach crusher. And it shortens the entire breath. It makes it really hard to breathe. If you're already tired, um, you can tap to it. That's happened in Men and Morris where uh, someone tapped to it and they thought it was a neck crank, but it wasn't. They were tapping to that. Um, so that's another, those are some of the positions, side positions that might be trying to get you into you. Of course, another one is, is taking your back. So we'll, we'll, I'll show you different ways to take the back in a second, but I just want to show you what it is. This is another position that you'll find yourself getting into. You're flipping, you're rolling around. You might not even know how you got into it, but the next thing you know, you're in this position right here. They have their, their hooks in between your legs, and um, if they're not smart, they might actually have them locked, but they don't want to lock your legs. It's just straight down like this, feet open, and straight down to the ground. You want to point to your toes or the ground, and you get it over under. The underhand, this is the overhand. No, this, this is called under because it's coming under her, it's coming under her arm. This one's going over her arm, and it's also called the seatbelt. The one that's under, right here, under her arm, grabs my wrist, boom, like that, monkey grip. Monkey grip means my thumb is going over, over, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's going over. It's not coming under, so this is C grip, makes a C. Monkey grip is your thumbs like that, so your thumb is going over the wrist as well, not underneath it. So if it's underneath it, C grip, over it, it's monkey grip. Monkey grip is stronger just in this position, bam. The reason why is C grip, it's easier for her to rip my hand away. This is stronger to pull this hand in tight. And my, their, goal, their goal from here is to be most likely to rear naked choke you. And so that's going to be that as they try to strip, strip the other way, they're going to strip the hand away, come up, come up tight like this, and I can pull this arm now, and take this hand, I can slide it behind her head, and then hold my own bicep. All I have to do now is pull my shoulders back. I bite down hard my feet towards the ground and just pull my shoulders back. And it's really easy. You want to make sure your elbow is lined up. <laughs> your elbow is lined up with your chin. So if it's if it's too much offset like this, the choke isn't like this. You're not trying to take your your forearm and push it into the trachea. Although you can choke, you, know, you can get someone to submit that way. But that's not your goal. With the rear naked choke, you're trying to you're trying to choke off your arteries. And by choking off your arteries, it'll make you pass out within, usually within seven seconds, if it's really tight and strong. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but typically it takes about seven seconds, and then down you're out. And so most schools teach this, and they should. After 10 seconds, if the person hasn't tapped, let, let it go. You're, you're training, you're not trying to kill each other. So it comes deep. You take this arm, and you shoot it in deep. So your elbow is lined up with their chin. That's what they're trying to do. And then, then your hand goes on your bicep. This hand goes right behind their head. I like my back of my hand, so it's, I can hide it behind their head. And put my head here so they can't, they can't reach back. Try to reach back and strip my hand out. It makes it really hard for them to reach back and strip my hand out. Then I just shrug my shoulders back and up. And then, boom, so I don't want to put too much pressure on their wrist. I was going to tap, but I couldn't feel it's trying to find your arm. I'm just trying to, that's another position I'm trying to get you at. Most likely, though, they're going to fall to one side or the other side anyway. Definitely so they're either going to fall to their strong side or their weak side. Their weak side opens up a lot more position. So once they get in this position, I recommend fall to purposely make them fall to their strong side. Strong side meaning the side that has the arm that's over, the one that they're going to be choking with. Now it's a lot easier for you to defend this over under here. So if I have this over under seatbelt, you can strip this hand away and then pull this hand away and try to turn into them. And so you want to try to get your whole entire back up flat on the ground and then turn into them. Oh. And then now you end up in their guard or you can put your foot between them and then we're back into a position of, of you're not getting choked out. So that's another position that I'm trying to get you in. So those are the major positions we're going to try to get you in. Either full mount, or actually, I didn't go through full guard. So another one is pulling guard. Now you think that, especially if you're a wrestler, and did wrestling in high school and college or whatever, um, any wrestling background, this is going to feel very foreign to you, but it's actually a very, very strong position to be in. So, for example, they might, let's say we're here, and I pull and I drag and pull them, and then I shoot my feet through, and I get them here. And, and let's go to school, I'm back to my camera better. I'm all the way back by my Maximus. Oh, by the way, this doll here is Maximus. You can buy him online. He, he comes from Australia, and he has full articulation. He's he, anyway. He's made of a wooden skeleton, and he's really good at practicing certain moves. I'm actually working on a, a jiu-jitsu doll right now that 
uh, way better, and it has a metal a metal structure, uh, metal skeletal skeletal structure that's that's just like human. That's all the same human movements that we have. We're really cool to practice uh, certain moves. Well, actually, most all moves. You want to get they want to get their feet not low on the hips, but high like this on the back, How and then they're going to be holding a head, maybe a gable grip, and they'll be holding them down like this. Because this person we try to posture up to get out. And now I'm holding them here. If I can get a, if I can get an underhook here, even better. I'm holding one of their arms. Now they can't slide down in the way, and I can hold them down, make it hard for them to, to posture up. Now, kind of the, 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 and they can even go to like if they're really small, go to almost like a like a triangle on their back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, another the reason why this is such a powerful place to be in is let's say they start to posture up. I let them start to posture up as a fault a false security and once they do I can grab one of the either arm. I can grab this arm and I can pull it this way, come up, chop her head, and push her head the opposite way. Just not to, I can put this leg down here and push off it sideways and I can put my foot over her head here and her arm and I control her arm. Now I have an arm bar. Now typically someone would fall down like she just did. I don't know why she just did that. That's not what you want to do. You want to, you want to try to fight into it, but they're going to pinch you back. And they're going to take your arm and they're going to pull and pinch and lift their hips up. And they're going to hyperextend your elbow right here. So it's an inside arm bar. There's also outside arm bars in here. And then the thing that a mistake that you don't want to do is if you're trying to posture up, you keep your hands on their hips when you're posturing up. Don't don't put your hands on the ground. If you put your hands on the ground, and, and, I, and I have you in this position here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack this arm. Um, well, not, maybe not always, but I'd hold for a second here so they can't get up. This foot's going to come here. I'm going to push myself up like this, and then come around. I'm going to grab their wrist. Now I can, now I can start applying a Kimura. Um, so if I, if I come all the way, all the way through and I grab here, we can go and we can do, we can do a, a Kimura. So it's kind of like a Americana, but a Kimura. And so I'm going to grab the wrist here. So first I'm holding the elbow here just to secure it. Then this arm is going to slide down as I'm coming up. Control the wrist. I'm going to come all the way through here. I'm going to ground my own wrist just like we did with the, um, the Americanics. So now I'm going to come back this way. I'm going to block this hand because they're going to try to reach back here. And they're going to try to grab their own leg to protect, to protect my their thigh. Like that to try to protect me from, from getting this. So if I keep this this foot out here first while I'm trying to apply it and keep this leg out here and this leg here. This makes it hard for the grab and then I can twist and I can pull them down and then I can keep working it, get my body position in position and then it's just a matter of pulling the arm the wrong way and then bam, that's the that's, that's other thing I'm going to do. So don't put your hand on the ground because you can get into it more. Usually some of the things I want you to be aware of is that I want you to make these mistakes. So we'll go through more different, different mistakes not to make when you're in this position. So, those are the four major positions that they're trying to get you in. Another one that is kind of like a neutral position that you might want to use sometimes is if you find any time of way that they're trying to get on top of you and, and you're defending yourself and they try to get, and they try to get, on, try to get all on top of you, like stand up and get on top of you, if you can trap a leg as they try to come on top of you, it's come on top of Harry. Get, get all in, like, turn your mouth. You then have this leg locked. And now we're in half guard. And immediately I want to try to push myself into a sideways position. But I'm, this is a half guard position. Or I want to try to get myself underneath them. So I might, I might even go this way so that I can start to, so I can start to work off. I can brace on their neck, push their neck out. And then I want to try to get underneath them. So come on, there you go. Try to actually get in the top down position here. I want to try to work underneath them pushing that leg out, work underneath them here, and I'm trying to get to where I can turn them over so I can get underneath their leg here, for example. Now I'm in a better position because now I can, like, now I can kind of sweep them, um, like locking their legs. So anyway, half guard is a, is a fine position to be in. It's kind of a neutral position. And, and usually it's used to neutralize them, like getting full mount. So let's say she was getting full mount on me. Go ahead and get full mount. As you're trying to full mount, you can go ahead and lock a leg down. Then now that leg's locked down, you got half guard. So when you want to turn into them, you know, like this. So boom, you're locking the leg down, 
You can keep it locked on just one, but I recommend two. Really lock it down. Or you can even do the triangle type lock. There are different types of locks, but basically just trapping that leg, try your leg up. You try to make sure they can't get their leg out. That's the whole point. And then you want to turn, maybe move their arm off you to offset their position from you, stiff arm. Right? So now you can send, and then you can start creating space between you and your opponent. And now they're in a worse position than you are right now. And you have a greater chance of, of turning turning this into a favorable position. So for example, I'm like a hip tuck underneath there. And, oh, this is my body. and then I got this foot in here now. So now she's no longer in a down position. They're trying to probably get around me. That's fine. I'm going to follow them through my corner and get here. And then, bam. Now I'm in a half, like, I got half butterfly guard and half uh, mount here. Not mount, sorry, uh, guard. So I don't have full guard yet because I have both feet around her. But then I can lift this up, boom, and come out, and then we've got that right there. Okay, so. You just lift me on the ground with one foot. Yeah, so anyway. Back right here. So those are the different uh, positions they're trying to get you in. Now that you know what they're trying to, why they're trying to get in a position, or what positions they're trying to get in, and a little bit about why they're trying to get in those positions, it's because it's easier to get to submit you from those positions than, than from other positions. Now there's submissions from all different kinds of positions, like transitional positions, all this kind of stuff. And you'll learn that as you go, but just knowing these basic ones will help you tremendously. Now the next thing is how it starts. So how a sparring match starts is you, both people are usually sitting down. Sometimes one person might start standing or on their knees, uh, but both people don't start standing, especially as a white belt. Maybe two blue belts or purple belts might sometimes off in the corner, you know, start off, start off standing, but they want to make sure they have enough room to take each other down. Um, typically it's not something you'll see very often. But uh, anyway, so, but they need to practice that if they want to go, you know, for a tournament or something, a tournament, start standing like that. Before, actually, before, I'm trying to think if we should go through this part or if we should go through um, the major points of defense. Let's go through the, the three points of defense you have because most likely, especially if the opponents are bigger than you, they're going to be trying to smash and pass. And smash and pass simply means that they're going to try to smash right through you. So let's say she's going to try to smash and pass through me. And let's say I'm like here, I'm trying to thin myself. I don't know quite what I'm doing to get up on their, on their knees. And then their feet, whatever, and they start just smashing right through me. I have three levels to protect myself at this point. One, my first level of defense is my feet. Now let's go ahead and turn so we can see what this looks like. So your feet go right on your hips like this, like, like a seat belt, and I can push them back. So now, and, and it's good to have, if you can have three or four points of contact on the person, it's good. So this is one, this is two, three, four. I have four points of contact right now with my opponent. This makes it really hard for them to do anything. Um, they're obviously going to want to get their arms free. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can't hit yourself. Yeah. So, boom. This is one point of defense I have right here. Now, the reason why I'm, I want to hold on to the wrist if I can is because if not, the, like the wrist, they can go ahead and grab my feet and let's say pick them up by grabbing my heels and pick them up and pull them and throw them to the side. And again, now I'm here. Now, once they manage to get past your feet, the next two things, I, I consider one thing is basically the same distance, is if I was able to turn fast enough I have a knee here, and I have stiff arms. So stiff arms and knees are about the same distance away as you can see. This is my next line of defense. Stiff arms and knee, this keeps them away from me. So as they try to pull power into me, I have this defense right here. It makes it harder for them to get into either full mount or get around me to the side mount. I can defend myself right here. The next is, let's say they, start, they get around me, they get around my knee, and they start getting a side mount, and they smash past this, my stiff arm, and they get me down to here. My next and last final defense is my elbows. So now I have my elbow length. Elbows are here. Elbows act like she can push all her weight on my, all her weight on it, and I can just hold really easily. I'm using very little energy here. This is not a position you want to be in, but if you, if this is position, you don't want to let them get past this. 
this is like your last line defense. If you let him get all the way past and you're here, this is very bad. You don't want to be here. It's really hard to get out of this position. There are ways to get out of it, and there's a lot of good videos out there on this. So if you do find yourself in this position, there are different ways you can get out of it. Basically, keep in mind that, especially if it's another white belt, and you manage, they manage to get here and they're really pressing tight on you, is you're going you're to step on one of your feet here and then push this foot and then this shoulder. So my left shoulder, my right foot, it's always opposite. I'm going to shrimp. I'm going to lift up like I'm like wrestling, how you, how you bridge. But I'm going to bridge off this shoulder, not my neck. And I'm going to come like this and try to get my knee inserted back between me and my opponent. And then I'm going to push off of them, try to get a foot around them. Now they're no longer got side control on me. Now we're a bit now in a much better position. So now you've got out of that very dangerous position to where they could have, you know, full mounted you or got other kind of submission. So those are your lines of defense. So again, let's say she's standing up. I'm here. She takes the more standing up position. We're here. I can lock my feet behind. This is this is open guard right here. I like to, you know, try to have this, you know, this another or more points of contact with your opponent is better. Or let's say I have here and I have the ankle here. You know, you want to make sure to have, try to have three points of contact. So as a beginner, you might not know what those two points of contact are. So I recommend feet behind the, the, the hooks behind the knees and wrist control like this. So now you have more than one point of contact. Don't just like lay right down. Right? It makes it easier for them to pass. You want to try and stay up here. Because from here, if you pull them, you can actually pull down, and you can actually grab their their ankles here and pull them off the balance. And bam. Well, and then, I was gonna say I pulled her though. And you can pull off the balance and you can start working on one leg at a time. Don't let them get mount on you or or guard on you. But anyway, so back up. Go back to the same position. You got me in a weird spot. So from Sorry. from this uh the first thing, when they're here and they're standing up or even if on their knees, it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say they're on their knees. Yes. And they're, they're trying to put your, your defense is here, your feet. In this case, you might want to come back, but slightly offset yourself. Don't be flying your back. Just slightly offset yourself. And I recommend having one foot underneath one of their legs. And so as they, that way they only have one foot, one leg. I know this is the leg they're going to try to pass. If I have both here, I don't know what leg they're going to try to pass. They might throw my legs either way. But if I hook in one leg here, and I want to look hook it in either here or down low by their, by their knee. And the reason why I want to low by their knee, and I want to turn myself a little bit sideways, so they're kind of sideways to me. So now, and I want to turn towards the leg that they're going to attack. So this leg, I highly doubt they're going to try to pass around that way. And I'm also trying to hold on to an arm if I can. Uh, if I lose the arm, let's say, and they grab that leg, I know they're going to try to throw it this way. Immediately, I want to know that so I can put my knee between me and them. Can you knock this fall over? Yes, yeah, sir. Really try to like, get, get side mount. Get your knee between you and them. Then you got your arms here. Make a triangle and post yourself here right against their neck. So you want to just take your wrist and put it right into their neck and just push away like this. And this is a legitimate way to get them, to keep them away from you. And then from here you can actually come, take a leg, and you can actually start pulling them down. And you actually you can work on a type of arm bar right here. By like taking this arm here, and then come across this way, and you can actually pinch the arm the wrong way. It's pretty easy to get out of, it's hard to do, but it's a way to pull them away from you and try to sit up. Okay, so again, try always have three points of contact when you're in that type of defensive position. Um, if you want, what you want to try to try to do is so right here is try to get this kind of like inside guard here. Like this and that, most of that. Instead of both we'll standing down, just have your feet kind of by their knees. And the reason for that is if you can manage, for example, to grab behind their elbow and their wrist and pull them towards you, you can take this arm here and now you've got this position coming this way, you can pull this leg up and sweep them. Now, there's running out of room here, but basically, it was finished off with me coming all the way over like that, and bam, now I have full mount. So that's one way to get them into full mount.
Okay, so that's your, your three ways to defend yourself. If you end up in this position here, where all you have is your elbows, remember, it's like this. So your elbow is against the ground and, and then comes up, your elbow and your shoulder. It's like that, boom. So it's not like this. You don't want to use this part of your arm. It's your elbow is, is into their chest and your shoulder. So bam, they can't push past this. It's like a stick. Then you take this arm and put it right here, and I can push. You can get yourself back away from that. Now, one thing that sometimes you might see online, uh, there's a few demonstrations of how to properly shrimp. I know um, there's a few YouTube channels that, that teach it, and it's really not too hard, but I want to teach something that, that Hina Gracie uh, shows, and it's super important, and uh, we'll learn shrimping before we get into what's called fist fighting. And that's where you're really fighting for control. That's where you're using a lot of your energy because you don't want them to get a down position because then you have to use a lot more energy to get out of that position into a good position. And then we'll go through the three major positions and a, a, a certain, uh, learn this from B, BJ Penn or a form of it from BJ Penn, we kind of modified it from, uh, from Grace Jiu Jitsu. But it's a way to get into three major positions and each person can roll back and forth, back infinitely, until you guys are both tired. And it's a really good way to learn how to transition in between those two major positions. This will be the full mount, side mount, and then the full guard. And anyway, so um, shrimping, let's go ahead and show that really quickly here. Can we the way? I'll have you just sit right So I'll show it from different angles. So when you shrimp, the whole point of shrimping is that you're kind of always offset your side and you're kind of stiff arming them so they can't get past you, right? As you're trying to, you try, it's to create more space. They, they start smashing you and now you're down to your elbows and you don't have much space up anymore. You're running out of space, right? There's not much space to you and your opponent. You need to create space. One way to create space is shrimping. So how shrimping goes is it's basically using one foot. So if I'm using my left foot, then I'm bridging off my right shoulder. So it's like a diagonal, it's opposite. So I lift my butt up off the ground completely using my left foot and my right shoulder. So my left foot and my right shoulder are acting like two points of a swing. And I swing, I can swing my whole entire body between those two points. So that's, that's what shrimping is. So it's taking this foot, pushing off the ground, the shoulder, turn sideways, and then turn like this. Like you're trying to touch your toes, like you're trying to Fold yourself in half. And then you can you can switch the other way and use this right foot and left shoulder and trip the other way. And notice I went down the mat. And that's one drill you'll see that happening in one of your training schools, wherever you're, wherever you're going to, one of your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu schools, whatever, that they'll be doing that all the way down the mat. If you're wondering how they get down the mat so fast doing this exercise, they're doing it properly. If you do it properly, you can create a lot of distance. So from the side view, it's like this. So you have one foot on the ground. Well, you have both feet on the ground, but one foot you're pushing off. Let's say I'm pushing off my left foot. You're using my right shoulder, lifting my hips up. I have this entire area. There's nothing underneath me because of all my shoulder and foot. And I can swing my body right here. And so you swing and go to touch your toes. Come back up this way. Now it's off this foot. You lift your body up, swing, touch your toes. Look how much space I just covered by doing two shrimps. Very, very helpful. Um, maybe another position, another angle would be. We'll try this angle really fast. Okay, so you like this. Your foot, opposite shoulder, foot, opposite shoulder. So I push off this foot, I'm kind of sideways on this shoulder. Nothing underneath, underneath me, so I can take this and I can swing. See that's like a swing. I can swing out, boom, like that. Yeah. So I'll have her try it now because this is not something that she's practiced a lot of. Go ahead and show them that way, that was a swing. You're going to have me do it? Lean on her? Well, if someone knew, now face like this, like this, like ours. So if she uses this leg, let's say, this is the foot that she's going to use right here. Boom. She's going to push off that foot. You stay flat foot, not on your toes. Push off that foot and off that shoulder. Now remember, 
you always want to be kind of sideways toward your opponent. It's very rare you ever want to be just fighting your back. So always kind of like turning sideways toward them, trying to, trying to get those points of contact. So if I'm trying to attack her right here, she wants to keep this point of contact right here, uh, a knee between me, stiff arm me, right? And maybe grab this arm, like this wrist, three points of contact at least. You always want to have, so if I'm trying to pass, I now have to get past this. I have to try to get past this knee, this arm. It makes it more difficult for me. She wants to kind of return toward me. She's flat on her back. It's much easier for me just to push this to the side and get past her. But if she's facing toward me, it's harder for me to do that. So now I have to figure out a way to get past all this. And it makes it much harder to try to figure out how to get, boom, to some sort of dominant position like side, side control here that I can let go of the legs that I need it and boom. Okay, so let's go and show the jump real quick. Okay, so turn this over. Diagonal for the one? Yeah. Shoulder leg. Okay, feet head down, feet down. Okay, so she wants to first kind of turn sideways towards a little bit because she's never going to be flat on her back. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up, let's say, this foot or this foot and that shoulder. So lift your hip. Now notice this, there's nothing underneath here, right here. I can put my hand all the way, look from one end to the other. That's completely, her butt is completely off the ground. And then she's gonna swing herself, swing her butt out away from me, and her head and arms are gonna come toward me and I touch her, touch her toes. Like that. like that, so she comes towards me like this, so she creates a lot of space. I'm gonna try to get those Butt up, shoulder, and then back. Okay, yeah, so start try to swing yourself back and forth a couple times before you try to before you actually actually can move. <laughs> so try to try to I'm fill the, try, try to fill these two points of contact as if they're a swing with your butt up. Okay. Now try to swing yourself back and forth. Right? Now you want to swoop. There you go. So she made a lot of distance. Now watch. If we're really close together, I want to show you how much distance someone can create, and I'll show the other way around. Uh, let's say we're really close like this here. Now she wants to. I'm, I'm trying to come in, and she wants to create space. Go ahead and jump up. Look how much space she created between us that wasn't there before. She can stick both of her knees now. Look at it. Okay. Come back here real fast. Yes. Let's say I'm here. I'm trying to pass by her. And, and look at right now, she can't get this knee in. Let's say I'm so close that she can't get that knee in. Now, if she shrimps right now, go ahead and shrimp. Oh now get that knee in. Oh Boom, look at now. She can both knees. She can even get a, she can even get a hook all the way in. She can, get her feet in. she can get her feet in right now. And then she can turn up as you get as you get your feet in, boom, get back into butterfly guard here, and then sit up. Because always defensive is sitting in butterfly guard. Very good position now. Right? So she went from potentially getting side mounted to coming into a dominant control or at least an offensive butterfly control. Or not control, but an offensive butterfly position. Let me go and show you from another angle really quickly. I'll be I'll you'll be the attacker, I'll be the one jumping away. Go ahead. Side side? You sure? I guess, well, let's try both sides. Try this side first. Okay. I'll do it both sides. That you guys can, I'm Wait, trying to do this side, since we're on this side first. Okay, so. So I don't have to go back so, over. So let's say they're trying to come back over here, though. Okay. Because they're going to be trying to take. So I'm here, and they're pat and they're really pushing pressure to our, no, not right our own hand yet. And I'm pushing here, but I don't have much. I don't have much right now to defend myself. I just have stiff arms and a knee. And as they're pressuring into me, they're trying to keep pushing past me, they're trying to break down all these points of pressure to swing around, swing their body around. And once I notice they're gonna swing their body around, I'm gonna use this foot and my opposite shoulder, I'm gonna shrimp out. So try to swing your body around to side control. I'm gonna shrimp like this, boom, and create the space so I can put my feet between me and her. And then I can sit up here and reset back to back to this position here or I come here or I come all the way up and try to get to this position here. Now I'm in a good strong position. Because from here I can take this arm, I can control it by um, uh, under hooking it or over hooking it rather and I can start turning and I can lift, slip, and bam, I go to side control. I could also lift them out. Let's look at that from another angle with her on the other side of me. So first thing she does is she gets past my, I'm slightly, I'm slightly controlled from the side here. She manages to get past my legs, and boom, I have to use my knee and my stiff arm now. 
This is all I have between me and her. The next thing, I should turn over sideways. Like this? No, no, that way. Okay, keep going sideways. Okay. So we're like this, right? This is all I have between me and her right now. The knee, let's step real quick, so you can see. The knee and my stiff arms. Now, let's say they try to swing their body around and I know they're trying to go for side mount. Because if you feel their body switching that way, I know they're trying to take my side. Right, so let's go back. The second you feel that move, if you stay calm and you're right here and you're just, you're just trying to feel out what they're doing and you stay calm and relaxed, you could then know what they're about to do when you start learning more and more like what, what they're trying to do. From here, if you feel them moving this way, you know they're trying to either go north-south on you. And that's another dominant position, but that's one you can learn later. Um, or they're gonna try to take your side. So as she starts to move sideways, and I feel it, slow motion, once you start moving sideways to take side control, let's say you try to take a deep, a deep stepper. Oh. Like this? You try to get here, right? Once I feel that movement, I wanna take this foot off your shoulder, and I wanna shrimp, I wanna lift up and shrimp out. Now look how much more space I have between me and her, enough to I can actually stick my foot in between her leg right here. You can't see that, you're gonna have to, have to turn up there and see this. You see? There you see. I'm coming down again. So now I have enough, I've created enough space, I can go sit down, that I can get my foot underneath her, her, her thigh here, and I can pull myself here into Butterfly guard right here. So butterfly guard is kind of here. Butterfly guard is where I have my feet underneath the thighs like this in some position. That way I can try to sweep one way or the other. Um, or I can even have my feet. Or I can have it. Oh, okay. Anyway, so it's trying to go from side. Yeah, little angle view. It's basically having your your feet between your thighs in some way right here. And that would be uh, butterfly. It's not guard. Uh, we could, you could do as guard if you're laying down, but uh, butter, butterfly position. That way, from here, like I said, if I can get an overhook on any one of these arms, let's say an overhook on this arm right here, I managed to pull this arm in and overhook it, I can then take this outer leg here and sweep it. And how that's going to look is, it's going to come by her knee. Don't be down here, slide it to her knee and lift her knee up. So, I come here, I underhook this, overhook this arm, and I can now sweep this foot and turn it to my side and sweep it all the way over. Now I don't want to let go of this foot yet. I either want to come around like that, it's like it's called like boom. Some people call it like wind, windshield wiping or around the world. Boom, so I can get on this side and take them out. But this leg now is in, go ahead and get in half guard. She can shrimp out and half guard me, boom. All right, so like I was saying, it's really important why not want to show that I gave up again? It's this way, come across this way, boom, 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 it's like that. Then you lock your wrist, both wrists like that, like that. So you lost both wrists and that's the gable grip. So gable grip is not like this. It's thumb, thumb in, boom, strong. And then lock the wrist, make it even stronger. Bam, you can see, it's really strong, it's hard to pull this grip off. You just pull them into you tight. Right, so, um, the other thing I was going to talk about is monkey grip versus C grip. So up close, C grip is like this. It goes over and like that. It makes a C. Right? You're C gripping. This is easier to pull out of. Unless you're, unless you're pinning your hand straight to the ground, now that weak spot is the ground itself. So they can't push through the ground, and now they can't get out this way because your thumb and your hands. Monkey grip is your thumb goes over like this, and then you can still pin them down like that. So sometimes monkey grip is better. Sometimes she gets better. I'll show you one example of that when I show you the Americana finish so that I'm going to show you your whole goal in all of this is to try to get the full mount. And from that full mount, I'm going to show you how to get one, one submission which is pretty easy to learn and pretty easy to get in different ways to get it. Well, two main ways to get it and how to properly do it. That way, if you ever do manage to get them in the mount and tire them out, go for that submission. And then uh, you might actually get a, get a submission on your, on your partner. Right, so when we're here, there's, they, they grab in hand. Your best way to get out of this right here, no, just one hand first. Before they even try to grab this, I've had this tight, right? I know that they have this hand, they're gonna try to yank it so they can grab my elbow and try to pull me into them. 
for different things. Now, one of the things they might try to pull you, this is one thing to watch out for, is they might pull you in, wrap their hand around your head, and then come in here for a guillotine, and they're going to pull up and back. And it really sucks because there's two different ways a guillotine can work. One is it blocks off your airway, and you might just tap because you're freaks, so you can't breathe. But no big deal, you can go without oxygen. The oxygen block off right here is not blocking off the blood to your head, so you can go for a long time without being able to breathe. You know, if you hold your breath for 30 seconds, you, know, you can stay there for 30 seconds really easily and try to get out. The other way, though, is where this part of your wrist goes right against their trachea, and that can actually crush your trachea, and you don't want that to happen. Um, I've, been, I've recorded this a couple of times, so I can't remember if I mentioned this, but... You didn't say anything about it in this video. This one? Okay. So, so one time I, if I, I've already said this, forgive me, but one time I, uh, one, I knew I could get out of it, I was pretty positive I could get out of it, he had me in a, a guillotine, I was pretty positive I could get out of it, and so he's pulling on it, it's a lot of pressure, and I managed to get out of it, but for a week after that, and this was just sparring, this wasn't like a tournament or nothing, so for a week after that, it hurt so bad to swallow, like it felt like, strep throat, strep throat kind of, and like I was like swallowing glass, for the first day it was really bad, and it got better every day, but for like a week, it hurt to swallow, sucked, not worth to me, it wasn't worth it for a sparring match. For a sparring match, just tap. Okay, you got me. You got the go team. That's good. Do this for yeah, and you can hurt your ribs too. And I'll show you one way not to hurt your ribs. All right? And there's another position. And this, I think this is really important actually to know even before you get to the fist, or the fist uh, fighting. So another form of control is one they reverse it. And they actually have side control. And then they reverse the, the weight to be this way like this, so now they're like this way, like this, so they're holding their hips here, and they're across your upper body, and they're holding their legs out like this. This can be really, really uncomfortable, and uh, there's a lot of things they can do from here. Now the other one is a little bit different, and it's to where, no, just put your down. The other one is to where I'm gonna basically sit on the shoulder. Can you see the on the mat? I don't think, oh, it's not like I'm basically gonna sit on this shoulder, and I'm gonna control this side of the hips with my arms and, and legs here, I'm going to sit right on here like that. I'm not going to have my bottom, all my pressure is going to be on their body right here. And, <laughs> and what this allows me to do is it allows me to set up the twister side control. Or it allows me to set up the truck and a lot of, it allows me to set up the truck and all the kinds of things. So I'm going to have her do that and I'll show you what I did wrong. So one time, when I didn't really know what the, I was, I didn't really know what the twister side control was, so come opposite way. Here. My head didn't be done that way. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, your butts would be up on my shoulder. Yeah. No, down like that, there you go. So now they're controlling this, and I was like, what do I do, what do I do? And really fast, I try to bump them off this way. They try to push all their, their weight mm -hmm. forward like that. But what <laughs> happened was, so going down for a second. Sorry. What happened was, is the guy had a really strong clinch down here, and he had this pressure really hard here. So I tried really fast to do this, it ripped this muscle a little bit, my, my rib muscle. I didn't fracture the rib muscle. I can go like this and didn't hurt at all. I didn't, didn't even feel it at first. So I didn't break. Like later. I didn't break. I fractured. I felt it right away. No, I thought it was until later we got home. Like, oh. No, I mean, I, I felt it right away. That's why I stopped. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I messed up bad. But I didn't realize how bad I messed up until really the next day is when it was like, ooh, it hurts. Well, that's really like but over a month. honestly, pulling, or pulling that muscle or stretching that muscle or ripping, I don't think you rip it, but it's like it pulls it farther than it should or whatever, which is kind of like ripping the muscle. Anyway, it damages the muscle, the rib muscles here. That hurt more than when I broke my rib boxing. So, um, personally, to me, this was, it was worse. And it was all from just that quick movement. So, if someone has you that movement, this is a don't. If someone has you in twister side control, right, go all the way down from my hips here. If someone has you in there, your butt should be up on my shoulder. Like this here. Okay. And your your body down, you're holding here, holding across me. The whole goal is you're trying to flip around and get me a truck. Right. Is you don't want to just twist like this. Instead, try to create space with your hands here and create the triangle. So you're pushing one hand against the other, and maybe across their armpit right here and push them and try to crawl your body out like this. That's another thing that you're practicing a lot is crawling your body out. And then you take this foot and turn and pull it up this way and turn it toward them and try to come like this, like north south. I mean, that's just one way to get out. And so what, the, what that drill is, is you usually get like a, the military teach it to, to like crawl backwards underneath stuff, is you're using your shoulders to crawl back. That's really important. A drill to use, so when they're doing 
you know, classes and you're doing the different drills up and down the mat, that's one of them you'll probably do all the way down just once and back, using your shoulders like that to crawl. Really important to develop those muscles, so, so do those exercises. And that's uh, so really because it, it'll help you in a lot of different ways. Like, get the triangle, for example, helps you one, two, three, boom, you get the triangle deeper. Um, okay, now let's get into fist control here. So, with fist fighting, as they're butting in towards you, they're looking to grab an elbow, most likely, or they're at least looking to get a baseball back grip. Because if I have a baseball, if I have a regular grip like this here, a C grip, she can turn her wrist and then just yank it out because that's the weakest, weakest points. Even if I had a really, really strong grip and, and she can, if she really tries, she can get her arm out. Um, now, if, if her wrist was bigger to where I couldn't lock my fingers all the way around mm -hmm. and it was like that, actually she had a bigger wrist like I do like me, it'd be much easier for someone to go like this and just pull their, their hammer out. You want to turn your wrist sideways the long way so you pull right through. So I'll show that up close real quick. So if someone has your wrist like this, Turn your wrist sideways and then pull out. It's much easier than doing this because you have to, there's less friction. There's less things for them to hold on to. They're holding to something long and flat versus like this. This gives them more grip. You break that by going here and bam. Another thing is, is, is going inward this way or outward that way, snaking. Boom, boom, boom. You learn that in Wing Chun. At least that's where I first learned it was in Wing Chun. Uh, actually, I learned it first... Uh, from something that used to be some Jeep and Doe, and, uh, but also it's part of the giant. And that's kind of where it comes from anyway. So if they grab this wrist, I can wing chung. Boom, wing push chung. against that, I can now grab this arm. Now I have control, now I can baseball grip. In this case, any baseball grip. Well, actually, yeah, no, it's not quite quite, it's almost baseball grip. And it's almost baseball grip. I can pull, and I can then start shooting my leg through here, and keep pulling, and shoot my leg through here, and now I got side control. Not side control, sorry. Why well, I say side control? Because oh, no. I thought she was going to the side, but I have Our full guard. I have full guard now. And then I cross my legs, boom, like that. I want to try to get my legs up high and put my arm around. I want to try to get it under if I can, and boom, and hold this right here. And then from this, I can, I can try to come under and then sweep and throw her to the back. Anyway, we'll show you the ways to, to do that. But just know that's one of the things that they're working to do to you. And you want to do it first. So right now, this is when you want to spend your energy. You don't want to spend your energy. You want you don't want to be relaxed here and just let them plow right through you, pull you in, pull you in, and then you're here, and then they pull you into guard. Because then now you have to work on on using so much more energy to get your head out. So let's say wrap the head around tight. You have to worry about get your head out here. Get your head up. Ship off the arms. Get your hands on their hips. Stiff arm. And this is posturing. And then you can like get one, one leg up here, and then you want to turn your hip sideways. So I'm going to turn my hip sideways and pull this hip out like that. And take my elbow, drive it into the knee to the ground, and then drive my leg up and over it. Come here, I'm going to keep this foot high so they can't half part me with this leg. And then once I can, I'm going to block this hip here so they can't get out. And then boom, I'm going to go here, and now I got, now I got side control. So that takes a lot more energy right there, then it would have taken me to just sit here for a little bit and, and, and wrist fight. So she's grabbing, grabbing her, don't grab, grab, and then I can grab this and break that, wing chun out of this, grab your wing chun out of that, grab your head in tight, I could go for, I could go for a guillotine. Ha ha, slipped out. And then here, oh, now I got both arms, I got their control, ah, I can start training them, I can pull them into it. And another thing I already showed you before is you can, they can come here and they can pull you like this, and now I can just I can just go under over the seatbelt. I already have the seatbelt on her. And I can take this leg out, and I can pull her up this way. And bam! Now I got my hooks, and now I got seatbelt. I got the back of my right here, all from dragging her arm. So there's a lot of different positions you can end up just from dragging your arm. So it's super important that this is when you spend your energy, not letting them get control of your arms. So T-Rex, boom! Your elbows stay away, and they stay tucked tight to your side of your body. So if she tries to grab my wrist, I'm just, boom, wing chun around. So they can't grab my elbows. So I'm just, this is when I'm spending my time. This is a good defense too. Grab them behind their head and lock it. When you grab it, 
lock your wrist. So it's behind their head and then lock your wrist after arm wrestling and keep the head down tight and keep your head over their head. Now they have to work to get that off. Now how you get out of that is if she were to grab my head, pull down, you take this hand here, you want to pull up on their elbow, push their elbow up like this and tilt your head out to the side and push them away from you. And then from there, you can try to pull this arm and then try to get, you know, pull all the way. You can try to take her back or pull them toward you and into your guard. So you start your, you can start your full, oh, not, yeah, into your full guard, sorry. So anyway, um, spend energy here. This is when you're spending energy. You don't want them to, you want to be the aggressor right now. You want to be the one that pulls them into you and it gets the position you want. If they get a two on one like this and they start pulling you that way, immediately grab their shoulder and push and stiff arm. Take this arm, wing turn around, grab their wrist right here. Then you can push this arm because you have control of this arm and pull them. And now you've got the control here. You can now pull them into this control right here. And, then, and so what that looks like, so, so I'm real quick. I just want to show you what this what the seatbelt probably looks like. I'm sure. So without even getting her into side right into uh, back mount control at all, well, how it looks is one hand goes over, the other hand goes under. So one's over a shoulder, one's under an armpit. The one that's under the arm, monkey grips your other hand. This is a seatbelt, and you pull you pull tight like this to your so it's tight, and then it's hard to get out of because they have to strip that arm off first. They have to strip this hand off that off the. One in there, as I show the hand, you can get this arm and start working it in to the, to the choke. My elbow is way offset right now, so I gotta twist my elbow. One way to do that is you can pull their head back and come in like this, boom. Now my elbow is matched up with her chin, and I can start doing the choke. I know I said I was gonna be teaching uh, submissions, so I don't wanna be teaching, because there's tons of ways to learn all that. This, this is important though, put in the seat belt, because then you can, you can get into that back mount. And then from back mount, learn how to do the choke. There's plenty of videos on there. Um, I think his name is Stefan Kesting, has some great videos for free on his YouTube channel. Just um, um, the, the Gracies have a good free video, I believe, on how to do a proper choke. So just um, go to, uh, what's their name, YouTube video or channel. I can't remember what it's called right now. I think it's, well, one is Gracie University, and the other one I think is, uh, is, um, Anyway, just type in Heener Gracie. It's R E N E R. That's Heener Gracie, and that should bring up his two channels. One is uh, Gracie University, and the other one is I think uh, something about fight analysis or oh my god, I can't. I, I visit it a lot. I can't remember. I can't remember the name. But anyway, super super cool. And my my name called Gracie Academy, and another one is called uh, Gracie Breakdown. Maybe anyway, I think that might be. I think that one's called Gracie Breakdown. And that's where they show a lot of these different moves, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm one of those. And once you're on there, just click on the, the little search icon, and then you're still searching his, his channel only. And then type in Rear Naked Choke, and then they show you how to properly do it. Anyway, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff online, so I don't want to go through all that, because there's tons of places to learn how to do that properly, and it's really not that hard to learn the, the, the proper application. But you definitely want to learn how to do it properly, because if you don't do it properly, if you do it like this here, and just pulling back on someone, you're like, how come they're not tapping? Because all you're doing is putting pressure against their neck um, to where maybe they can't push. If you're pushing up, it's making it so they can't breathe. If you're pushing into their trachea, it's just making it painful. They might actually tap to that because it's really painful. Um, but it's, it's not going to be a proper rear naked choke, not blocking the two arteries. When you block these two arteries, they're going to pass out like 7 10 seconds. Make sure when you're practicing this, only hold it for a second. That's it. Now, there is one thing I'd like to show because not very many people show this. I'll turn sideways for a second. With the rear naked choke, it's not very many people show this. So, um, if you have the rear naked choke, you have your hooks in here. I mean, if you don't, it doesn't matter. If you have the rear naked choke, one, put your arm through all the way as far as you can. You want to shoot your arm all the way through to where your armpit is on their shoulder as far as you can. Shoot, shoot your arm as far as you can, but don't shoot too far out because they can actually get. Um, they can try to get. Well, actually, what the arm maybe. If they manage to turn your arm around, they can arm bar it right against right on their shoulder. <laughs> so sh don't shoot it all the way out like this, but shoot it this way. But shoot it in deep, boom, like this. Almost like you're trying to punch them, right? And then come so that your elbow is, is lined up with their chin. So their chin 
and your elbow should line up together. That's how you know you're blocking up the two arteries, is when you shoot that in deep. Now this arm, you want to just take in and snake it in behind your head. I like my back of the hand, so I'm like the top of the hand here. Now if I do the top of the hand, they can reach both of their hands up and grab my hand and shove it off. They can reach up behind my hand, no, no, reach up, no, no, no. Put both hands behind your head, no, no, no. Both hands behind your head, one on each side, and shove my hand off. Pull up over your head, strip it down. Boom, my hand comes off. Now I can still choke with one arm, but it's a lot harder. They have this, so now, now, I have, now I have to try to either switch and then grab this control, I lock and block that arm, and come, boom, boom, through. Anyway, the important thing I want to show, is, I get sidetracked easily. <laughs> The important thing I want to show is they shoot this through, you pull, you got it even, and then you want to snake this arm. So when you take this arm, snake it behind your head, the back of your hand. Hide the back of your hand behind your head, put your head here, not try to reach behind and grab my hand. Much harder for her to grab my hand. Try to go ahead and try to pull your hand up, my hand up and up. It's really hard. By the time she can even try, I, I probably already have the choke too deep and she's going to be passed out. But properly, is reaching behind your head like this and pulling. So, so we speak both hands behind your other hand and try to strip and pull it up. Up and over your head. Up and over your head. I'm gonna let her kind of do it. Okay? <laughs> now, if I were to hold this tight, it'd be really hard for her to do. Now, one thing I want to show though that, that, that you probably won't see anywhere on YouTube, I've never seen it, but it's something I found that adds a lot more pressure, and she can verify whether that adds more pressure or not, is once you get this arm in deep, you grab your bicep, this hand goes behind her head, like this. If I just keep that and hold, and, and I want to pull my shoulder blades back, like I'm shrugging. That's how you, that's how you do you keep your head tight, just pull, go on top once it's choking. Okay, it doesn't take much to choke. Now, I'm going to breathe it for a second. Now, tell me if this adds more pressure. All I'm going to do is instead of keeping my head flat like this behind her head, I'm going to make a fist with it. That's the only difference. I'm just gonna make a fist. So I have the carrots tight, I then I pull and I make a fist. Immediately it, it's like it's like not two times tighter, but that was me trying to breathe. It's me it's immediately a lot tighter and it really pushes more pressure here. Because it's kinda pushing it into my to this V to where the this forearm and this bicep is what's blocking these two arteries. That only works if your arm's deep enough. Like that, I can just you know pull back one arm like a choker, but it's harder if, if you come up and pull behind the head. It's much easier. You know, you just got shrug. But if you make that fist, already she's probably trying to fill the choke. Like right now, she's probably not choking, right? No. I mean, all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna try to breathe out. All I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna make, a, I'm not gonna pull back and just make a fist. It makes a difference just by just by making a fist. It makes a difference. If I make a fist and then I shrug back, no more air comes out. <laughs> well, the air is on the, the air is not the issue. Uh, it's mainly it's, like it's mainly these two arteries that are going to be the issue. It's me taking a deep breath and blowing out, and I keep blowing me out. If you and if you're passing this, only hold it for like three seconds, and just just to the person who can feel, or just hold it for at the most at the most ten seconds. At that point, the point of my your your partner that you're playing around with might already be passed out. If they are passed out, just just kind of just kind of just kind of hold them like this here. Don't let them go anywhere. Just kind of like, you know, hey, they'll come back instantly within within like seconds. I want to try to move them around but so much. But if if you hold it longer, that you can cause serious damage. So don't hold it ever longer. I would even, I, would, I recommend not even hold it longer than seven seconds because if they're not out in seven seconds, if they're not out in ten seconds, you're not applying it correctly. Um, so ten seconds max, but. I recommend maybe even seven seconds. But, but what you could do is you can have your partner tap when they actually, hey, I just want to make sure I'm applying it correctly. Only tap when you start to see stars or feel tunnel vision. Now, sometimes they might not feel that experience of tunnel vision. They might just block right out and not even know what happened until they wake up. Um, so when you pull this in and shrug your shoulders, I don't want you to tap until you, oh, okay, sorry. Until you solve. So that way, so you know you're. So I see stars. Oh God, I'm watching cats out. So you know, and if you need to, like I said, you can pull their head back and, and get that in tight. Now, when you have this in properly, and you, and you shrug your shoulders back, it's going to properly put the pressure. <coughs> I'm breathing. My throat hurts. It's better now. Whoa. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah, no. I started just seeing black spots everywhere. So it means you had all that hair, right? Uh, yeah, I was mostly more focusing on what I was seeing, though. Right. Spots and, everywhere. And I felt like, oh, you fall that head, that flood. Yeah, flood. like air just. <laughs> yeah, flows back into the head. Um, so, air just... so you can ask your partner, hey, I'm gonna apply this to see if I'm, if they're, if, they're, if they want to do it, and see if you're doing it right. Because if they don't, hold it for like you know five, maybe seven seconds, um, or they might tap before that because you get too scared. But mainly ask for them to try to see the tunnel vision. And uh, sometimes, like I said, they'll pass out before they even see that. Yeah, you're definitely applying it. But, um, 100%. all right, so let's go back to, back to fighting with the fist. So your goal here, when you're fist fighting, is to try to get you into a, a, a dominant position, one of those four I talked you about. So either you want to try to get a, a two-on-one behind the elbow on the wrist, or a baseball grip, which is the opposite. So. Or not, well, I guess it's not a baseball grip, because baseball grip, if you like to hold a baseball bat, would be like, you try to hold a baseball bat like that. That's a lot easier for a guy because you only have two thumbs holding one side. So she can get her arm out of that much easier than if I have one knuckles up and one knuckle down. That's like, hmm. Now it's really hard for her to get out of. And I can just pull this and pull her toward me. And as I'm doing that, I can take my foot and start shooting my feet in already around her as I pull her toward me and then come and grab around her head. And I got the look, and I want to get tight, and get tight, and get this. If I can, I want to try to get some under here. So if her arm is, let's say, here for right now, and I'm blocking it, I want to try to swim under it. Bam, pull that in tight. Right, so, well, and we'll show, you know, how you can try to transition from that to a different position. The other position you might want to try to do, or the other move you might want to try to do, like I said, is get behind the elbow and pull them all the way over like this. And then let's go and show from the front view. I want you facing the front. Oh, wait, actually, I want, you, I, want, I want you right here facing me. Hopefully, this will work. I think this will work <laughs> with the angles I'm trying to do. I, I would have had you right here. So, I'm going to pull her all the way over like this. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to pull her all the way over like this. Boom. And then notice my this hand comes right. This is the overhand. This is the underhand. I grab on the wrist with this hand like this, and I can pull her. I can pull her back into a tighter seated position, right? So that's that's an out. Now, how you properly do that? I'll show from the I'll show from a slight angle view. You just want to take the arm, grab behind behind the elbow, grab the wrist, pull fast and hard, and pull them all the way over. Start to get this under, under here already, and pull them, get this foot out, like this stand up, as they're coming over, and then get this foot here and stand up, and then try to get it underneath their legs, or even just under their belly right here if you can. And then start to pull them back, and then you can start to get your hooks in between their legs right here. Or you just, you know, you can just hold them sideways like that, if you need to right now. And then you take your time here, you don't have to like be in a rush. And then you can start working on getting your hooks inside their legs. And uh, you don't want them on their back like this because if they get on their back like she is right now, this is bad because they can actually turn into me and get into my, keep turning, turn, uh, they can turn into me. And once they start doing that, I want to quickly reestablish them. I want to get them out. So that's one way to get them out is from a failed attempt to pull them into, into that mount. So if I come here, and I'm going to start back with this side. So we're fist fighting, and let's, actually let's go ahead and go flip this finish the fist fighting real quick. So one is, your, your, like I said, your elbows are back here, they want to take, they grab one wrist, just try to wing chun around it. So either this way or this way, so you're making a snake, you're, making a, you're snaking your arm around, just keep snaking until they let go. Just snake around and grab if you have to, and you can hold and you can pull if you need to, you can already have control. Um, if they get two on one, one, two, immediately push with the stiff arm and come right back. Or push here with the stiff arm and right back. The reason why you want to leave your arm out there is there's actually ways for them to submit you from here. So push them and come right back. And then you've got two on one and try to pull them toward you. So the second they get two on one, try to push that shoulder away, come back and grab their two on one and pull them. So then you can start coming from here. Now you can come like this up onto your knees, and then take this foot out here that's on the mat, and then try to step all the way over 
their body. Now, if you do a failed attempt at this, when you're trying to pull them down, and they get on their back, swing, swing to your back here. Like towards you? Yeah, no, 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 no. I get all the way on your back right here, this way. Oh, you my yeah, back. you keep turning all the way into me. See, they, they get on their back like that, you need to immediately come here and block with your foot. Your foot needs to come over and stop them from turning into you. Because if they turn into you, then you want to, you want to make them keep turning into me? Oh my you want to be able to turn into them and get, and now they decide to turtle, they decide to go back on their back, immediately you follow, keep going. I want you, I want your stomach to come in, sorry. Oh, my body. Turn, they the try back. to turtle, you got the back control now. You can stick your hook in here, and then on the other side, this foot, the hook in here. Now you got your seatbelt, once you have your seatbelt, then you just turn back in, put to the ground. You should have that way. And turn like this, I want to go see on camera. Oh, okay. Now you got your seatbelt, and you got your hooks in. And so now you got the control here. The goal here is obviously to try to get, try to get a hook. One tip you can do here is you're going to take it, if you're flexible enough, you can take this foot and you can grab it and trap this arm. Now that arm's trapped, you can start going for that, that choke much easier. You don't only have one hand to defend against. Boom, you can actually, you can come over here and switch it now. And you can also trap this leg around that, around that arm. But I just trap one arm and you can start going for the choke. Anyway, you can learn more about chokes. I just want to show how to get in that position, different transitions. So another thing, that, well, the most easy thing to do from this, from this here is going to be to either do a butterfly guard or a butterfly position sweep or to try to pull them into your guard. So you can actually grab both hands really fast and yank towards you and then put, put your feet around them right here and then grab their head. And from here, all you have to do is start to pull back and now you pulled guard. And then you can start working on getting an old runner, or you can just hold it here, you're here for right now, and then you can you can switch this to a full mount. So now once you're here, let them fight for a little bit, let them work, they're gonna be trying to posture up. So knowing what they're gonna be trying to do, they're gonna be trying to get their head out from underneath my grip. Once they do, I wanna get an over under. Why do I want this under and over? Try to posture up now, try to get your head out from my hands. No, 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 I, I try to duck your head out, Remember, I still have the arm here, and from here I can now switch it, and I can start getting out here, and I'm working on, they, they, they can't do much with their arm right here. Try to turn here, try, turn here. Now try to hug me. All right, so now I can start to go for a different type of position here, where I can I can take this arm, and I can come, if, I, if, if they allow me to, I can go to the Oma Plata anyway, I won't teach later what that is. But for right now, I'm in a good position here, I have the arm control, and they can't get, they can't posture up. And I can come right back into here, and I'm still, I'm still in, I'm still in the main guard. Okay, so. It's like the point of here, the, uh, it's like the point of the video where the girl is supposed to like put serious, serious amount on her spray <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so I'm gonna show you again, very quickly. So if you have, if you pull them into your, into your full guard here, and you have, you have this arm trapped, doesn't matter if you have a trap like this, or if you manage to get under the arm and you trap it like this. Either way, as long as that arm is trapped, it makes it easy for you to roll them into full mount. Well, not easy, but it makes it possible. Let's go and kind of turn this way. So let's say I have it trapped here. I'm just holding behind the bicep and I'm tucking this into my armpit. I'm holding here like this. I got this high right here. Now what I can do is I can, I can take this foot here and I can hold, still buy this to the back to hold them down and put this foot on the outside of their leg. It's going to turn sideways a little more. Hi, like this. Okay. So this foot right here, I'm trapping it on the side of her leg, on the outside, like this. Not on the inside of the leg, like this. On the outside, I'm tucking it in. I'm holding it. So now I got her arm trapped and I got her leg trapped on this side of her body. It makes it much easier to roll her. Then I just take this foot off for just a second to step in between her legs. I don't want to step on the outside of her leg. I want to step in between her legs. So let's go ahead and turn. Let me show what this looks like. You're my way. This foot here is stepping inside, not the outside, and the inside of her leg. And now let's go back this way. All right, so once you have that inside, Immediately, once you go from here, and you can just slide it straight down like this. 
Just slide straight from their back, just slide your whole foot straight down their, their butt to the floor. Now it's right between their leg. And then you push off this shoulder, or not push off, but you're gonna, basically you're gonna do similar to a, uh, yeah, yeah shrimp thing, sorry, lost my thread thought. Simply towards like uh, shrimp thing. So you're basically gonna shrimp by pulling your, your, hood, your feet up like that. What we're gonna do is you're gonna push this arm up and you're gonna shoot it towards the ceiling. Now this is why you wanna have this arm around your head like this, is so that you can try to transition. And so this foot right here is gonna chop inward. This foot right here is gonna chop inward. This is gonna shoot up, and your whole body's gonna bridge off of this shoulder here. So you're gonna push off this, off this right back leg, and you're gonna, your left shoulder is gonna roll on. So you're gonna push off like this and go. Now one thing you wanna make sure your partner's doing is what she's doing, holding my shoulder. If their hand is not flat on the ground like this, let me see your hand flat, and I roll her right now, I can actually hurt her wrist, especially if it's out side of the face. Like that. If I start to roll her, I can actually make her wrist go the wrong way and hurt her wrist. So if you're working with a partner, make sure their hand is there. Um, even if you're sparring and let's say the person has their hand out that way, be like, hey, go like this, you know, and come back to here. And if they go, why'd you do that? They're like, I don't want you to get your hand hurt just in case I roll you. Now you kind of already told them what they're gonna do, but it's better that they're safe. safe I'm sorry. Yeah, but anyway, so you hold tight here, you hold tight here, slide down their butt, bridge off that, shoot for the sky, and kind of an angle that way, the way you want to roll, and push and roll this way, like that, bam. And now you've got the full mount. This is where you want to be right here. This is the ultimate goal, is in the full mount. And I already talked about what full mount and how to do it. But quickly, briefly here, let's go back over again the different things you're doing. So I'm holding the hand underneath your head, put your hand out here like this, stiff arm. One thing they might do is they might try to grab my arm and pull it in because they're going to try to do what I just did to them. Right? So what I just did was how I trap an arm, then then she can trap my leg, and then she can take her other, her other foot and put it on the inside of my legs and bridge off her shoulder now, reach for the sky, and she can twist and roll me right back into into now where I was before. So now, I, now I'm into this position again. So then I have to reverse it and come back over, move right anyway. So how to prevent that is quickly insert your hooks in, boom like this, and get them up high to the sky. Keep your, your pressure down, keep arm up here, get your hooks in. So if they try to roll and turn in any way, you have your hooks in here. So bam. So whatever which way you're feeling them, grab the opposite. So if she tries to roll me that way, my right hook is going to no, try to push me and roll me that way. No, I try to twist your body and like push me that way. Push no, my shoulder. Like actually roll you. Yeah, like, like push on my shoulder, for example. Like, and I'll try to roll me that way. And turn your body that way, and I'll try to twist and turn your whole body that way. It's harder now. Push off this foot. That's what I was doing. It's better. And twist. I can get this, this, this hook in tight. It makes it hard. I don't have to use my hand. I need to shoot my legs. It makes it hard. If she tries to turn it that way, I hook this in and I get this, this hip down. If she tries to hold that way, I do the opposite, I put this hip down. This side of the hip down. It makes it hard for her rollings, right? This is how you wear your opponent out. So as they're trying to get out of this position, they're trying to roll you, you're switching your, your hip base. If you have to, you can go out forearm, forearm like this. And just keep switching your base. Now this leaves your arms more vulnerable, but if you have to, you have to. Now, if they try to get this arm, go ahead and try to pull that arm in tight. When they try to pull it, you just keep it stiff. Now, when they try to pull it in tight, what you do is you pull in here and come in and back out and around. Bam. Now, please don't push it up hard for a second if I can show it properly. Yeah. It comes in, your elbow stays the same, and you tuck your hand in under and come back and tuck it back down. Or you can take your hand and put it palm up. This is much easier. So they're pulling pressure on it. Go put, 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 put my pressure on it. You can turn it palm up for just a second as you're turning it in. Don't turn it palm up right away, otherwise you can get arm, arm bar like that, it kind of hurts. Um, turn it this way first and then turn it palm up to get it in and then out and back again like this. So the second you feel the pulling pressure, go put pressure on her, then you go boom and back out again. And so that's, it's a swim like this. Boom, so boom, 
boom, boom, boom. And then sometimes just very go ahead and push pressure. And sometimes it can be kind of hard anyway for them to pull it in. And if they, they can't pull your arm, then just don't worry about it. But sometimes it's good to vary it. Like once you start to feel them pull your arm in, then you can go and then swim, bam, and you're back out again. So you keep doing that until they get tired. So this is the position you want to end up in, and that's how you want to control it. And once you control that position enough and get them tired, that's when you can go for Americana. Now I'm going to show the Americana. This is going to be something I'm probably have to move the camera in closer on and really be able to see this better. Can you show from this angle though, because that goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you can show I'll, I'll show it, and then I'll show it. I'll try to show it again with the camera closer because it's something that it's good to be able to see everything properly. So if you have this kind of control right here, you have your hooks in, at some point they're going for this arm again, let's say, or they're trying to grab your wrist, and then, then you, know, you can swim out of the wrist the same way. And then at some point you can see that you now have control of their wrist, right? See how I'm still call that, they grab my wrist, I can pull in and around snake and grab their wrist and pin it to the ground. Now at this point you're C gripping and you're pinning it to the ground. So I'm pinning the C, the weakest part, to the ground. They can't, they can't put, my weakest part now becomes the ground. They can't put their arms to the ground and that's why I want to C grip. If I monkey grip, they can just pull the arm toward them. So I want to make sure C grip right now. Then, then I want to get my hooks in, make sure my hooks are always in anyway. Then I'm going to take the arm, I'm going to feed it to this arm that's behind their head. I'm going to feed it over here, and I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to C grip it. I'm going to hold it toward the ground, right? So I'm still holding my C grip down to the ground. Try to get your arm up. It's really hard to get the arm out from this position. Take your hand under, so your palm's up. Palm up underneath their arm, come through, grab your own wrist with a monkey grip. Now, once you have a monkey grip, you can let go of the C grip and go to monkey grip on this hand. The reason why is because your wrist is blocking her weak part, right? So before, just really quickly, before, if I have just this grip right here without my arm in, so if I try to just stay right here and I'm trying to do that, in other words, I, I, let's say I'm in C grip, right? I switch to my hand, I go C grip. I say I go monkey grip as I'm going underneath her arm. She can pull her arm out right now. Pull your arm out, boom. Now pull her arm out of the way. See, now she's got her arm out. But if I keep the C grip and I'm coming under and I try to get her arm out, she can't get her arm out. It's tight, it's in there. I have to the ground. Until I get this arm monkey gripped, then I can ungrip and I can do monkey grip here as well. And then I twist my wrist just a little bit, not too much, just enough to her arms facing down. And I monkey grip this, and I kind of turn in tight. And then from here, I want to pull my elbow into her head here. I'll show you how to get the release the around the head in just a second. And you want to get this hook, opposite hook, so the hook that is opposite of the arm you're attacking. What is this arm up for this? This is this hook. Okay, go ahead. That's a hair so get, get your hook in tight on this side, get your weight down. So you hook tight, your weight's driving into the opposite side that you're attacking. And then all you have to do is you want to take this arm, hand down, and you want to paint it across the canvas, down like this. And as you're painting it with your hand down, can you hand please? As you're painting it down the canvas, you're going to be lifting their elbow up. And that's what causes the pain in the shoulder. Can I lift this up real quick? Oh, look at these baby hairs. They suck. So arm into the head. This is the finished position. Hook in tight, head down, bring your knee up a little bit, bring your elbow down to your knee, and then you're gonna paint their hand down as you're lifting the elbow up. Okay, so, and do it very slowly with your partner because it's really easy to hurt the shoulder. Now, one little detail, let's go back to here. You, you take this C-grip, you pull it into this hand, still C-gripping and holding, under, palm up, Grab monkey grip. Now I'm gonna monkey grip. Now once you're monkey grip, monkey grip, get this hook in tight right here for a second. Write them out, let, let, let them try to turn you and everything for a second, because they're probably going to. And then you can quickly, just for a second, get your hooks in, and then you kind of come up like this, and shoot your head up like this, your arm up. And then come right back down here, and then me get the hook back in again. Now you're at the proper position, you put your head down, you can come in here, hip up tight, get the pressure, then you just drag the arm and then lift. Now, the proper way to practice that is when you're doing this, over under here, when you're pulling this down, 
It's like this. You're pulling the hand down toward you. As you're doing that, keep your head down and just lift your shoulder like that. Like that. Don't come way out here and try to tweak it like this. It doesn't work. It just stays tight and up. So I'm going to go ahead and show the wrong way to do it really fast. You said. Like this. Huh? I'm just going to show the wrong way to do it. Alright, so the wrong way to do this. So you have everything down right, but the wrong way to do this is you're trying to come up like this and you're trying to go this way. If this doesn't really work because she can actually turn into me and she alleviate a lot of the pain and it's like I can't get it. Another way it's wrong is don't have it way out here. That's why your elbow needs to touch your head. If I try to start going like this, it doesn't really work as good. It's hard to it's hard to wrench on it, you know, and get it proper. You can always bridge and get out of it. So it's really important that the elbow is against their neck, tight right here. And then everything's tight. You keep their hand parallel to their head. You don't want to, you don't want it in too much, you don't want it out too much. As a matter of fact, you can pull it in, pull it in as tight as you can because only can go as close as your Hold your wrist, don't hold your arm, you're holding your own wrist. You pull this in tight as you want to because you can't, you only go so far. It's better to do that than to have it way out here like this. This is much harder to apply the technique than if you have it really close and tight. And then you want to shoot this hook in, oh, can I show you? You want to shoot this hook right here, not this hook, not the same side. You want the pressure on the opposite side, this side right here. That's the side you want all the pressure on. And then you're going to come down here you put your head in. This knee comes out for, for brace. Just in case, look at it. If they want to turn and push me, they're going to push me this way. That's why this hook is in. And it's hooked, it's hooked in tight and high. So they can't push me out that way. Head down. You want to paint the hand down and then lift like this with your shoulders. Just bring it in. And that's all it takes. Just make sure you go really, really slow. The other way to do it is you have them out position. They're probably praying. They're, they're doing some sort of defense like this or something, which is common. Your main goal is a stiff arm. Grab both hands over their arm and just push it straight down like that, boom, to the, to the mat. Now, at this point, um, you're sparring, so it's not like you're you know, always being super kind. Um, it might cause them a little bit of discomfort, but that's part of jiu-jitsu. So you hold it tight against their body and just push straight down like you're trying to go right to their shoulder. And they're going to let their arm go. Bam. Because if they don't, it's going to hurt. And once you have their arm pinned, you hold it there for a second, and you put your head, your elbow, between their neck. Now, if they turn their head toward you for some reason, you just push your arm down there to turn their head. You just keep pushing to your chin there to turn your head. And bam, you got your arm between them. Then you hook the hooks in just like before. And then here, you want to go to the C grip on this hand to hold it tight against the ground. Remember if you do monkey grip, they can pull their hand up. See? They can pull out this way. So C grip here, and then you underhook, just like before, everything's the same now. Now you can let go of this thumb and go back to monkey grip and monkey grip and pull it in tight like you're revving a motorcycle. And then head down, get the hook in tight like this. And this knees up for base, pull it down. Then you, just, then you just drag and pull. So it's down and up. So those are the two positions. And once you finally get to the mount, you manage to do that, you manage to tie them out, those are the two options you have. If you have them in, the, if you have them in the headlock, you can, you can do it where you drag and pull it. Um, there are different ways to also get, let's turn this way. There's different ways we can get to the arm. So as you're the thing, let's make sure your hooks are in. Your hook should be in at all times, even if you're just like this. Hook should always be in. That prevents them from uh, trying to roll you and push you. Now, if they push off your chest for some reason, it's, you probably won't run into this very often, but if they're trying to push off your chest like that, you can then use that to come in and snake around and grab an arm to the ground and pin it, and now you got an arm that you can start attacking. And then you go, boom, two on one. Now you're trying to attack this arm. Now at this point, they're probably going to try to roll into you this way to push you off and try to roll you. And once they do that, your hook comes in, your, your, your weight's down. And then you can pull your 
hand into here and hold it here for a second. Now they can try to roll you all they want. You got good control. Once you have good control, then you come in here like this and then you have the control. Then you come down just a little bit, head down, and then start painting it up. Yeah. And so that's another way it can happen. There's, there's tons of different ways. Maybe, maybe you're like this and you have your hooks in and they come up and they try to hold you like that. Yeah, try to hold me. Uh, they're just trying to hold themselves. They're just trying to hold themselves close. You know, this isn't no big deal. You just lay flat and like this. You just, you just take your hands out, hooks in. You know, wait for a second. Um, don't let them recover too much though, because they they know they tired themselves out. So at this point, you have your hooks in. Come for a headlock here, and then start pushing this way and start attacking this arm. So come through like this and push this arm out and try to come in and swim through and get the arm down. Or if they have their arm tucked in here, you can just grab at the wrist and just push your waist down and put it to the ground. So it's like this. Their arms in here, it's trying to push it. Or they're trying to, they're trying to bridge against your neck, let's say. Now the one hand against my neck, their hands are pushing. So they're trying to bridge against my neck. They're trying to do this, I'm going to in. I can just take this arm, come through this way, push down that way, and now I can start attacking this arm from Mary So there's all different kinds of ways from this top position to do Americana. There's more in mind, so look up um, how to, from full mount to Americana. There's tons of different ways to get to That's just some of the ways you can get into it. And so now at least you have a, an ending game. Um, now we're gonna show you the, the drill getting in between these different positions. And then I already showed you one already how to get from full mount to mount. That's not how to get out of position, but how to get in from one dominant position to another. There are, like I said, Techniques you can learn a little more harder from, from the guard that you can tap your opponent with. I mean, I thought you had to stand up. Like but, oh, I guess you can do it that way. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we'll, just, yeah we'll, we'll show you from different angles on how to do the drill. So this is the drill you want to do with the partner. And it's super important because you can transition through all three major positions and start to feel comfortable getting from those different positions. Um, I don't know why that's like irritated right now. Okay. Unless it's got a little bit of a you know, scratch or something. It just doesn't happen when we do all this, most of the mapping. But anyway, so we'll show you how to get in all these positions and the really important one of the practices, obviously, with a partner. So it's really, that way it makes it really, it's kind of hard to do by yourself. So you need to make sure you're doing it right. Even a good jiu jitsu dummy doesn't make this hard to practice with. Because um, you have to kind of do all the work for the dummy, and uh, with this way the person can do it. I mean, this is really important stuff to know, so we're going to go through it, and then maybe I'll go through quickly a few of the ways to transition if they get you in a bad position. No, actually, there's already tons of videos on how to get out of all these. So if you ever get in a bad position, you get mounted, you get in someone's guard, you get in, um, you get your your back gets taken, you get in someone's side mount. There's tons of videos on how to escape those positions. So, but first, master all this information. Understand all this. Because once you understand all this, you're going to do so much better and get submitted much less often. And let us know if you like the video. Definitely, definitely. Let us know if you like the video because if I get a lot of support, people like the video. Let me know. Hey, I'd like to see. I like how you teach, and I would like to learn more uh, from you specifically because there's already tons of stuff out there how to get out of certain positions and stuff but maybe like how I teach and I make it make sense better to you than they do or something. Like, hey, maybe, hey, can you make more videos? We'd like to see more jiu-jitsu videos, would be kind of cool. Like what um, that? Yeah, and maybe I'll even share some of the, the street jiu-jitsu stuff, the jiu-jitsu specific, specifically for street fighting. And uh, also it incorporates other things that I've learned throughout the years, um, boxing and Muay Thai and things like that for people that don't want to, but you need to know how to fight on the ground, but maybe you just want to ground and pound, you don't want to, learn how to submit all that kind of stuff, but it'll have all of that included in it. But anyway, so, well, how you do this drill is one person starts on the mount. So I start here, I got the mount. And let's say I'm just like, you see, you start out flat-handed like this, you know, or you can start out hooked either way, but it's better to start out flat-handed. Now I got my hooks in, now the first thing that the person on the bottom is gonna do is they're gonna bump me forward, cause me to, cause me to. Like this, right? No, 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 over, under, remember? Yeah. Just one trap, one arm. So you grab the arm, and then come over just over my body. Like, not this arm, you're not trying to try this arm. You don't worry about that arm, you're jumping this arm. If I'm over it. Right, this, this arm will go over my back. Oh, okay. Over the back. 
all the way over as far as you can. There you go, that, that, that pulls me down tight. And then she wants to trap a leg, just like the number four, so she's trapping this, this same, the same size strap, pull that arm in tight. Pull it tight, there you go. Get up quick, you have to quick, get your, you have to watch. Hold on, let go. If you have to take your arm, and put it inside and right like this to your chest. So boom, trap it, get it tight, tight, and pull it in there you go. So now this arm's tight, so she got this arm trapped, she has this leg trapped, and this leg is already on the inside. I'm walking towards the Because I, I had, my, had, had my hooks in. But remember I had my hooks in, so let's go back to where I had my hooks in. So I had my hook in, and it's up, so she had to get her foot out, kick it straight out. So you, should I get a solution? Kick her straight, straight, out, straight out to the ceiling and then tuck it in on the inside of my foot, boom, like that. Now it's already, and then she starts pushing off that foot. Well, I walked on my butt. No, we're not going to do that one. We'll just do this one right here. Oh, okay. Just push off the foot and then swim for the sky at the same time. <laughs> so we push, and bam, that rolls me over. Now, we're going to get back into the position over here. Okay, so now basically she went from me being in and mount to me being in and guard. And now I'm going to be holding her like this. Now when you're practicing this, just, just slight pressure right here. You don't have to do a lot of pressure. So now I have a gable grip. I'm not doing a whole lot of pressure. Just enough for her. She's going to take this elbow and she's going to strip it out from, from over her head. So push out and get her head out. And then you know you want to start posturing up. So she wants to posture up. Now when you posture up, your hands stay on the hips. You're pushing the hips down. Stiff arm, and you're pushing the hips down. You're here so no. everywhere right now. Yeah. Wait, wait, stop. Let me try All right, sorry. Lean down. Try to I'll try to rock out. Try to fix it. There you go. Yeah. Okay, right so here. stiff arm. Breaking is probably the best. And your arms are into my hips. My feet are staying locked behind her back. So I don't know how I can show that, but... Well, again, we'll show this in different positions, different angles. My feet are locked behind her back, so she needs to break that lock I have on her back. So I'm going to be trying to get and pull her back down. So you need to stay postured up. You don't want to lean too far back, otherwise I can come here and I can push her away from me. So she doesn't want to stay too far back. Too far she doesn't want to stay too far forward because I can re-grab her head again. And so from here, as she's posturing up, what are we going to do, right? Yeah, she like wants to, to step up onto one leg. Now I can I can try to sweep around and try to sweep this. So you just gotta be careful when you put this leg up to not bring it too far forward because you don't want them to be able to grab your ankle and try to prevent you from. So from I need it like right here, right? Right, and when I keep it behind my leg, kind of while you're still posturing off my. And then the next thing you want to do is get on this knee and drag that knee and put it. No, 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 that's not how you do it. Oh, that's right. You just drag that knee back. There you go. Now you turn your hip sideways, and when she turns up sideways, it breaks this, my grip I had, and my feet, and then she wants to immediately put her, no, don't go down that far. You don't want to go that far. You immediately, why don't you have her down, put your knee, side your knee, over my leg. Her knee slides over, over the leg, you want to kind of put a lot of pressure on it. Keep this knee up high, like this, so I can't, so I can't get half guard or try to relock my legs. You want, to, you want to keep this knee up high and pushing into it. You don't want me to go get this leg out. Okay. So keep it up high. Drive, drive it high. Drive into me. Drive into me. Drive all the way into me. Keep this up high. See, now my leg can't do anything. And then get this knee and slide it to my armpit. Boom. And now I want to immediately come here. This is the standard defense right here. So not flat foot like this. If I'm flat foot like this, all she has to do is take her leg and just and climb right over and she has to pull out. Now she has to pull out. Very easy for her. Now go back. If I defend myself like this, I'm blocking her hip. I remember it's supposed to be sideways to me. Yeah, so right now I'm blocking her hip. Now try to step over. Do I have to like turn down then yet? So now I can turn into her like this and I can prevent her from getting it. You know, I can start creating space by pushing and I'm like, come on, like this. Oh, gotcha. Well, I was trying to demonstrate something, but... I'm oh, sorry. Go back. Sign up. So you want to use this defense right here, like this. The reason for this is if they... I have a stiff arm right here. I'll hold it right here against her hips. If she tries to step over this, try to step over it, I can push my knee in between her now. 
So now she no longer can take them out. She doesn't, she doesn't have side control, and she doesn't have them out. So that's why it's important to have this control right here against her hip. So what she's going to do is she's going to switch to a modified mount. Then she's going to go. I'm still blocked. You're going to grab your own foot with this hand. Grab my toes. Yep, pull them up. All the way up. And then over the wall. And now she has to pull them out. Now the process starts all over. So now it's my turn to do everything. So, so what I want to do is now you come back and just keep you come back and keep your adjust my saggy bun. I can't really adjust it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my feet off the ground here. I'm gonna buck her forward. And what that's going to do is it's going to force her to have to catch herself because I'll buck her hard. She's going to have to catch herself. Now I want to then trap an arm. I'm thinking about when well, she's down here, right? And she's holding herself. What I want to think about is I want to over under. So I want one arm to be over and one arm to be over. So I want to trap an arm. So whatever side I want to trap, that's the side. I'm going to go for this side here. So when I buck her, I need to get this arm in here. In fact, this is a good position to be in, is inside, not your arms outside right now. So I'm going to buck her, get this arm right here, and then as I come around, I'm going to wrap it, I'm going to tighten it, I'm going to show from a different angle, and come over here like this and hold her down. And then this is a good position anyway, just to be in. Now she no longer has a good, strong, uh, full mount position. I'm going to take this leg on the same side of the arm, I'm going to trap that foot. Now remember, have your hooks in. Okay, so I'm going to trap, this foot's already trapped in, make sure the hooks in. This one, though, I need to get out, so I need to kick my leg up in the air straight and tuck it in on this side, right? So it looks like uh, at the same time I'm kicking it straight out, I'm also coming this way. So I'm going up and this way, down to the ground. I'm going to bridge off of this foot and on this shoulder, I'm going to make sure that their hand is tucked around my, around my shoulder so I don't hurt their hand. I'm going to roll on that shoulder to here. Now once I'm here, I want to get down and I want to come all the way down here, I can look over this arm and I want to start pushing on the hips and posturing up. Now if she gets an arm around my head, I want to push off the elbow, get her to the side, come up and I want to posture here like this. This is the, the posture position. Now I'm putting all my weight with stiff arms on her hips. Why? So she can't move anywhere. I'm pinning her hips to the ground. From here, I'm just going to stand up on this leg. The leg stays close to me. Right? So it's just like that. So she can't really do anything to it. This all happens very fast, but at first you want to practice it slow. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn your hips sideways. Try to keep your legs wrapped around my back. When you're pushing off, you push all your weight off her hips right here or off your opponent's hips, whatever, whoever you're spun with. Right here, I'm gonna push all my weight, this is where my weight is. And I'm gonna take my weight and push it, my hips sideways. So I'm using all my weight here. Then I'm gonna arch my back like a cat, like a, uh, a midnight cat on Halloween. I'm gonna arch my back. Sometimes that's not the break because her legs are shorter. Yeah. If not, then this leg is gonna slide back that way. I'm gonna push off her hips, and this leg's gonna slide back that way. And that's gonna break the legs around my back, break the, the wrap that she has, the lock. Then I'm going to take my elbow and I'll push her leg to the side, or you might stiff arm the leg, and I'm going to take my knee and I'm going to slide it over right here. You don't, want to, you don't want to just try to walk over, you want to slide your leg over with your shin and everything. I have bony shins, I'm going to do it kind of slow like that. So raise your shins. And then immediately, I'm going to take this arm, you want to hug it across their neck, and come up high like this. I'm high on this foot, this leg's high. She can't get me to half guard right now. I'm still holding this leg. I'll show you another angle I'm holding this leg. I take this leg out here, I want to tuck it in fast, and I put it by, high, I put it by her hips right here, and then this knee comes over here like this. Now I'm, then I'm going to take my knee, I'm going to turn the sideways like this. She's going to be in the, the, the defensive posture. There we go. I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach down, I'm going to grab my own toes, I'm going to bring them crossed and over. Now I'm in position now. So I'm in a different position really quick. So now I'm going to show it sideways. I'm going to do it again on top. That way I can explain. We're not going to go back and forth. I'm just going to explain it all from different positions now. 
So she starts off in full mount. First thing I want to do, my hands are tight here because she's in full mount. I don't want her to try to get my arms. So this is a constant, it's called the prayer position. And now I want to buck her hard. So I'm going to take my feet and push and buck her forward. When I do, I want to pull my arm and I want to grab an arm. Let's get someone grab this arm. I'll pull this arm in tight. This arm I want to shoot up and I want to grab her head. So now I have one arm and I have her head here tight. I'll take this foot here, get the hooks in. She keeps forgetting her hooks. <laughs> now if her hooks are already in, I don't have to trap this leg. All I have to do, I mean, I want to take this leg, I'm going to, I'm going to just bite it. I'm going to take this leg and pull it tight. That way I'm, I'm trapping her foot like this. So her foot, I try to get the leg up. I have that foot trapped in like that. So it's trapped. Now, now remember, all this is slow motion at first, but it happens fast when you do it. It's all one motion. When you trap the arm, you're trapping the leg all one motion, and then you're kicking this leg out and coming and stepping inside, and you're bridging. Mm -hmm. So you're bridging off this foot, this right foot, and your opposite shoulder, your left shoulder. So if your right foot is the one that you're pushing, you're bridging, you're going to bridge silage. You're going to take this arm, you're going to take the sky, you're going to bridge off this left shoulder here. Like that, so they just roll over to the side, and then boom. And then we're going to reset. So I'll just here. Now, let's say she grabs my head. This is always good to practice. Touch her. Huh? Push it off. Come up, hold their arm until you get all the way to their hips here, posture. She wants to stay up high, like this. And I want to get my, I want to get my, Knees back a little bit like that, so it goes straight down her hips, so her hips are on the ground. Once her hips are on the ground like this, I'm going to take just one foot and I want to get up. I want to just step on it like that. So now I'm on a foot and knee. So from this side looks like this. I'm on a foot and a knee like that. And now I want to take this, I want to break it sideways. So I want to push all my weight, I want to turn my hips sideways like this. Because what happens is, take it a little second. When my hips are this way and arms around me, this way is shorter for her legs to go around. But if I if I turn sideways like this, my hips are sideways, they're a lot longer. So it's harder for her to keep her legs around. Some people with short legs. Some people with short legs, it's enough to just do this and then turn sideways like this. Sometimes that's enough. If not, just Arching your back is enough to break it. If it doesn't, let's say it doesn't break it by arching back. Arching back means you're pushing off her hips and stiff arm and you're arching your butt out in your back. Now if that's not enough to break it, then you have to arch and say it doesn't break. Then you take this other leg, the one that you're not on your foot, and you want to take that knee, you want to step back with it one, one whole step. That's enough to break the guard. You've got to be quick because they're going to try to spin into you so immediately push this leg down and step on it with your knee. And then immediately jump here to their head as you're stepping over that leg. And this leg stays inside tight like this. So the leg is up. And you're here like this. Boom. Right? This foot is staying locked like this on your leg for right now. That way she can try to get your leg up. Like go crazy. Try to pull it towards you wherever. It's really hard for her to get her leg out. So you're just, now this happens quickly, but you're just holding this foot for a second, so it's locking that leg. This leg comes around, all the way over this other foot. And then you can release this foot and come to the side, and then you have side mount. Once you have side mount, you do modified side mount. So instead of going this way, like this, you go, you take this leg and you go this way like this. So now my leg is parallel with her body. My knee is as hard as possible. My, it knee, my knee is into her hip right here, and my leg is parallel to her body. And I'm still holding her tight. And I've got this back leg here as control. Just so she tries to push me, I can control myself. I'll show you if I'm in the angle you will see this better. And then she's blocking herself here. Now if she wasn't blocking herself, if she was trying to just turn into me like this, like Tying your knees in her, I can just I can just hold her knees in here and step right over them. So if they're really inexperienced, 
when you get to this position, try to, if they're not doing this, either way, even if they are doing this, try to grab this arm here and try to pull their leg into you for a second. This, con this confuses them, makes, makes them think they're trying to pull in, they're trying to pull into you. They're, they're going to try to keep, they're going to try to keep, right? They might not know what to do, they might let go, I don't know. They, everyone's going to react differently. But nonetheless, try to pull, and as you're pulling, let go and immediately grab your own toes. Not your foot here, not your ankle. Grab your own toes on top of them like this. And then you want to take your foot and just simply pull it inside their belly right here and shoot it straight across. And now you've got the full mount. Right? Now, 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 now it starts all over and she flips me over. And this is the cycle. Yeah, so the cycle starts over. I want to show one more, one more angle. Because first we started with we started with your head facing that way, don't we? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I want to start with this way. Um, that would see. Yeah, that would see what my feet are doing. Alright, so we're gonna show that same sequence from the position where you can see what the feet are doing. So they start off in they start off in, in full mount. You want to take your feet and want to push off the ground hard and buck them and push your, your pelvis up okay. like you're trying to hump the sky. I know it's a weird way to say it, but it's a way that makes sense. That pushes them up high enough to where you can get an arm underneath and grab this arm. The other one you're going to come up and you're going to grab behind their head and pull them in tight. Now notice if she had her hooks in probably, but she did it every single oh, yeah, time. Yeah, I keep doing that. So she have her hooks in right now, and then I already have this foot trapped now because she has her hooks in. All I have to do now is I need to get this hook free. So I get it in deep and tight. I just got to keep this leg up to the sky, pull it over this way, and down. From here, I just tuck this arm in tight. I want to make sure that this hand is not flat out on the mat. This, that her hand is not flat on the mat. Because if it is, and I start to roll, I can actually really damage her, her hand, her wrist. So if I notice that, I, I want to kind of look and make sure that if I'm sparring, I want to make sure, and if you're passing with your partner, definitely make sure if you see it, kind of elbow it. Remind them, hey, tuck your hand in. Tuck your hand in like that. And tell them, if they don't know what you're doing, say tuck your hand in, you don't want to hurt your hand. Tuck this other one, pinch tightly, pinch tightly like this. This arm reaches for the sky, as you come over like this, this hand is tight, this leg comes right here, just stays and locks that leg, this leg, and meet, the second you kick it out, and in, you want to start bridging, going for the roll right away. At one moment, all one movement, this pinch is tight, this pushes off, this goes this way. Now when you push off this foot, you're going off the opposite shoulder, so you're pushing like this. And then you're going over like that. Mm. And then we're back here, and we're right back to where we started before. And so now, well, we're not, we're not fully started yet, but we're back to, we're almost back. Anyway, put your hand over my head. Headlock my hand. Okay, it's always good to, to practice getting out of the headlock here, because most people are going to have some sort of under over on you. Pull their elbow and push and get your head out and keep pushing their elbow against their face until you get up to here. Hold their arm down if you can. And then you come to their hips and you're posturing up like this. From here, you just want to, I kind of like to tuck this leg, this foot right here, so this foot. I like to kind of tuck it in like this and I get on this foot right here. I don't want to go way out here because now I'm off balance and so she can throw me this way really easy. But if I'm right here, she can't do that. My, my, my weight is still up and down. My weight is all on her hips. I'll keep her hips pinned to the ground. I'll keep my arms stiff and her pinned to the ground. From here, I'm going to take a slight step backward with, my, with this knee, and then I'm going to start arching my back. If that doesn't break her grip, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knee all the way back here. That will break the grip. The second the grip is broken, push your elbow down like this, and then you want to take this knee Right away, push all your way off here and slide your knee over her leg like this. Immediately, this hand now jumps over here like this. I want to jump. No, no, no. Stay there. Stay there. Pretend like you're staying down. I want to jump to here with my head here. If I can, I'm going to work my hand underneath their head. 
I'm staying up high and tight. Notice how her leg is staying high and tight. Notice how this foot is staying over her leg. I don't want to do this. That allows this, this leg to get free. Now she can lift it up and start to try to, her, try to attack this leg. I keep her my foot close to her butt so she can't grab this leg as easy. But now, look okay, at She's got my leg trapped. So let's go back. That's why you hold this leg like this with this foot for a second. You keep your your shin on the inside of the thigh, and this foot hooked in like this. Now this is this foot's high, this foot's close to their butt. My hand is blocking their hips from, from, from sprawling out. This foot quickly goes out and comes around and steps on the other side of this foot here. Once it does, I can take this foot, I can slide it toward her toward her armpit and this foot to the side right here. And now I'm here, this elbow is blocking her hips. Then I, want to, then I want to quickly switch here, like that, and then this foot right here, out like this. And this leg, see how this leg is against her body right now. I want to go and reach for her legs and try to pull them toward me, but she's in this defensive stance, so I can't. I'm going to slide all the way down, almost like I'm trying to pull her guard, I'm trying to pull her foot off. So she thinks I'm trying to break this. She thinks I'm trying to do this right here, right? So I'm pulling this down, she thinks I'm trying to do that. Instead, I'm sliding all the way down to grab my own toes. Remember, hands over your toes, over the front of your toes. Not on the side of your toes, your toes are still good. Your toes can still get caught, and you can even hurt a toe. But if you go over your toe, it's really easy to bring it in. So it goes from the ground here, up, grab your toe, swing it, swing it, swing it here, across her belly, and then to the other side of her hip so she can't escape that way. And then you come down here and then immediately tuck your feet in like this and start going out so you have your you have your hooks in. And then it's her turn to do that. Now I do want I want to make a couple things more clear from this side view real quick here. When you're inside, well first it's like start starting this. I just want to show this real quick. When you're here, and you step off onto one leg, in this case, I'll step onto this leg, let's say. You can see it this way. This other knee is going to go back right there. It's all before, back like this. I'm going to break it, and I'm going to push this knee to the side, and I'm going to crawl over it. Now, I'm going to show it from this way again. Back here, keep the legs tight. The legs should be wrapped around my, locked around the back. Now, if I just arch my back, Sometimes it's not to break it, but sometimes it's not. So instead, I'm going to turn sideways and, and go back with this knee. That breaks it. And immediately push down and step over like this with your shin. And step all the way over like that, boom. And keep this leg held down. This leg here, I'm going to drive all the way forward. So I'm going to drive all my weight forward like this, keeping this leg trapped. Right? See how my leg's all the way forward? And then notice my foot is close to her butt right here. This foot is close to her butt, keeping her leg up high. Why? Now she can't get her legs together. She can't, she can't, she can't half, she can't go to half guard. This foot here, immediately I'm going to take this foot out, step behind this foot here, then I'm going to go that. This knee comes right to her hip, this hand blocks in the hip, this knee comes right up to her armpit. Then I come here and I can hold her. Now, now I'm holding only weight tight against her chest, so she can't sit up. Everything's tight. I can let her roll around for a second, try to get out a little bit, and then I want to come and grab this leg and start trying to pull it toward me. When I'm doing that, I'm switching here. So my leg now is perpendicular. Now this knee is against her hip, and I'm holding this leg, or I'm holding this hip, but I'm going to be holding this leg, act like I'm trying to pull it toward me. But really, I'm going for this foot. And that's when I pull, and actually, I can't even act like I'm trying to pull her leg here, and then slide down and quickly grab the foot and just come underneath her leg, not, not over her leg this way. I mean, you can, but if I'm going over her leg and she sees it, she can trap my leg, and bam, now I'm in a half guard. So instead, get back over, I want to come not over, but under her leg, across her belly right here. They probably can't see that, but across her belly and across and over. And then immediately sinking this hook in and then work on this hook right here, bam. Okay, so 
and then she would buff me. And then do the cycle again. And the whole cycle would, would, would go over again. So this is Shelly's how she buck me. Boom, over, under. She traps this arm. She already trapped, she traps, that leg's already trapped. This leg, she had to kick out and get inside. Bridge on her shoulder and push up to the sky and roll at the same time. Boom, that puts her into my, into my guard. She wants to strip her, she wants to strip. Come over here, this is my right, you want to get it Strip, just strip the headlock down, I'm holding it. So you don't want to come down, or you're not in the deal? Huh? Come down. Right here. Right here. Oh. So strip my off, and let it up. Boom. Now she's head out immediately, she shoves it to my face, and pu pushes herself up while she's doing so. Like that. Bam. Now, she, now she's there. And then boom. Now her leg goes back, she turns her hip sideways. Archie, it didn't work. Is that a slide? Then that breaks the leg immediately come over with your knee. Nope, keep this leg, you know, keep this leg, but keep it locked. Put your foot to the ground. Okay, so like this. Then say break it. Okay, all your weight up this way. So as you're sliding. Like that? No, no, as you're sliding over my leg. Right, slide. Slide over it, but get this leg up high. Oh, yeah, yeah, now get up. All your weight should come over to this shoulder. Boom, and get this high, 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 high. See, now my legs are trapped. I can't do anything. And then immediately she wants to take this leg, she wants to step away with that, and then sideways, and then she's good to go. Now from here, I want to switch to this defense right here. Like that. Now what she, I should just go to skip down. Okay. And it's hard to ski <laughs> down slowly here. All right, there we go, so. Like a caterpillar. So now what she wants to do is she wants to get this leg and she wants to turn, so she can, but she wants to grab this, this leg though and pull it toward her. So it's hard to pull my, pull my leg toward me. I think you're trying to step open over it, but then slide your hand down and try to like keep trying to pull, like you're trying to pull my guard. So I'm trying to hold it tighter, right? And then she slides down, she grabs her own toe and pulls it over. And bam, now the whole process starts over again. So really quickly, so you guys can see this one more time, and hopefully closer to the camera, you'll be able to see. So then I'm gonna bump her, and if I need to get in here tight, Push her up so I can create some space and then bump her and then get my arm around here. Grab this arm, come back down here. Now I'm going to kick this leg out and come this way and down and then bridge over and boom to here. From here, I'm going to posture up. She's going to wrap around my head, try to pull me down. When she says, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull my head down and push her arm up like this. Get my head out and I'm going to push it there and come all the way to her hips right here. On my hips, I'm putting all my weight on her hips. Now I'm coming up to one foot. I'm pulling this leg back and breaking her, her lock, pushing down with my elbow, sliding across like this, keeping her leg pinned. All my weight wants to go that way. I want to drive this leg up that way by coming all the way over here, almost like if I'm doing this kind of like pressure pass. But instead, I'm going to put my arm here so I can go to like that. And all my weight's up here, my foot's way up here. I don't want to get too far, I don't want her to be able to grab, so I'm going to block this arm anyway. So I'm blocking this arm. And then I'm going to take this leg, I'm going to step all the way around to the side of this leg. You already saw what that looks like from the other angle. And then I'm going to go sideways. And then I'm going to go boom like here, and then I'm going to go boom here. I'm going to grab this and pull it in, come sideways, I'm going to grab my foot. Now hopefully this is the part where I want them to go see this. Lay down, your arm's completely flat. From here, when I'm pulling the leg in, Lay down and keep yourself like that. As I'm pulling the leg in, I'm coming down like I'm pulling this foot. She's going to try harder to keep this guard now because she thinks I'm trying to break it. But I'm sliding it down instead of grabbing my toes and I'm pulling it under her leg and right here like this across her stomach. I don't think you see it on the camera. Okay, they can. So it's going all the way across her stomach right here to the other side of her hip right here and it's mounted right there against her hips. Now my knee and my foot is against her hip. So she tries to turn into me makes it very difficult, then I can just boom and slide into the mountain and get my hand. Yeah, there it is. All right, so that's the full sequence you want to practice. I'm going to sit back and face the camera. Yeah. My hair's quite all messy. What are you talking about? Your hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so you want to practice that back and forth many times until it becomes second nature. You should make it to where going through that sequence 
you know, you rolling them and getting out and them rolling you. It's a, it's a continual sequence. You see, it's an infinite sequence. So whenever you guys get tired, it's going to stop. You want to practice that as much as possible because what it does is it gets you very familiar with being in those three positions and how to get out of them. Now, there, like I said, there are many other ways to get out of positions, and uh, there's tons of videos on that to show all that. What we like to show really fast before we end after this video, since it's already super long anyway, is come on here. So when we're starting, no, no, turn. We're starting from the fighting position, and they decide to take it at more of an aggressive position, and they stand up. You know, they stand up. So you're holding. You want to try to keep your feet locked behind them and stay standing, and try to keep your hand on their on their on their wrist. Try to keep as many points contact as you can. This prevents them from doing anything. If you let that hand go, they can start working on this leg to try to pass your pass your leg. They're, they're gonna try to, what they're trying to do right here is they're gonna try to kick a leg out in front and back in my leg. So they're gonna try they're gonna try to go like this, like up and back. The same way you kind of got out, out of from we're just doing what we're just doing right now. So kick it out and back there around the world. Now she's like, now I have to step in front and hold the leg like this. Now we're now we're here like this. One more hips, and then I come right back in. And then I come right back in. And my goal is to try to hold her here. Now I'm not let her do anything for a second. Now I want to try to get her. I want to try to get to the point where I can pull her leg in. And then if I can get this leg and pull this leg in, and then maybe even pull her arms down and try to pull this leg out, and then get it to where I get a leg around her. And then I get that leg out. And boom, now, I'm now at least I got the, the. Once you get to here, do you remember how to? Trap, or uh, show, just go back in the video where I showed you how to trap an arm and roll. It's very similar to how you get out of full mount. So from here, you just trap the arm, trap the leg, take your foot on the inside of the leg, bridge up this way to the sky, up and over, and then boom. Another, another one you might want to practice uh, from that position is remember that you have those three points of contact. So for whatever reason, uh, they go to standing and you're defending yourself. Now the thing is, is I don't think in sparring, if you, you're not allowed to, like, you can go to your knees maybe, but you can't like fully stand up if they're fully standing up. And, then, and even then, they're not supposed to be like fully, fully standing up. They're supposed to be kind of like bending down sort of. But if you're back like this, that's when they're can be kind of standing up trying to get around your, around your guard. So you're just trying to hold the foot in, the foot out, and try to twist. And constantly put a foot behind your leg. And this is so that they can't get around easily around you. So if she's trying to pass around. <laughs> I didn't actually think that was going to work. Well, it didn't. I got out though. You didn't get, get around me though. I don't know, the whole point is I'm trying to get out of your Okay, but let's do that and then try to get around me. I don't know, I'll probably fall. I felt like I was going to fall. <laughs> but you, didn't, you had both of these in though. Okay. And I was like, I pushed my weight on you, and I was like, Rah! All right, maybe you just come here, and just follow them. Hip on. Didn't work. Hip on, foot behind. Yeah, yeah, so it makes it really hard for you to get past you. Now, if they happen to push all their weight, they're trying to pressure you. You're not pressuring me. You want to be you want to be pressuring me. So I'm trying to push. Now, if you get to this point, we have butterfly, and they're pressuring into you, you can lift their weight no, up. No, secret. <laughs> Hold on, let's get back. Let's get back over here and go sideways. Actually, it's probably good the way it is. This is so if they happen to be pressuring into you, right, and you have your hooks in, and they're pressuring, once they get over to a certain point to where you can feel their balance, you'll feel it. You'll feel when they're, they're really trying to pressure down into you. Once that pressure is kind of about, once they're, basically once their chest is level with your chest, you know you can lift them up very easily. Like this. And so then it's a quick lifting up and pull your legs up from underneath them and wrapping and dropping them back down. So it's, it's simply just lifting them up, <laughs> lifting them up. <laughs> Why are you poking your legs? I don't know. Here, let me do that again. So it's simply lifting up, right? And after I lift up, when I come back down, I want to, I wanna, so I'm going to go like this much. I'm going to lift them up. <laughs> I don't know why she's doing that. I, a normal juicy person wouldn't do that because then I can just. Because then I can. I'm trying to get as comfortable as I can. Because then I can just sweep. All right, here, do that again. But let's just say. Try to get a little faster. No, I'll just say. I'll just say. 
that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just do this on watch. No, no, I'm gonna do that on so you can learn. No, I'm just gonna do this one where I have it, I have my seatbelt right here. Okay. I have my feet pushing against you. I have you pushing all the way down. You're trying to get past. You're trying to smash past my weight. I can push you, <laughs> and then just let go. Jeez. It's your car. Okay, so that's the gym idea. Now you can you can do that from butterfly as well. Typically, people won't do it. You need to back. If I have here, typically people aren't going about in there trying to pass and trying to pressure into me. She's not even pressuring into me, I feel no pressure at all. Plus we try pressuring me, and then I lift up, I can then switch around and boom, like that. That's how it normally go. But she wasn't pressuring into me. If they're not pressuring into you, then who cares? Just, just hold them there and then sweep them. For example, if, if they don't know what they're doing, and they're not, they're, not, they're not really pressuring you, you've got them here, and all they're doing is just kind of leaning forward, then just grab an arm, grab this arm here, take this leg, and sweep this leg, and if they lean that way, then sweep that leg. And then, oh. then just sweep them. And we can just grab this leg, and then sweep this leg. And you can just sweep it up. Then you pull the arm down. Got where you got behind this leg here. So I'm going like this, grabbing, grabbing the leg like this. And then I can sweep this leg up as I'm pulling them down like that. And I can get me into You can see how if I have this leg and this leg out, I can come here. And I can, I can prevent them from getting guards that have this here, and I can then get my legs out and so forth. Come back. Yeah! Thank you. So, <laughs> if both people are staying sitting though, if you're both, come here, you're always going to stay sitting. Until you start feeling comfortable going to your knees or trying to stand up and pass in their guard, you can always practice with it, but I recommend starting from a sitting position. So, if we're both in a sitting position, we're going to be doing this, this kind of fighting, pulling the head down, they're going to be pulling out, they're going to pull my head down. I want to come in. We're going to be constantly fighting for control. And what you're looking for is for some point you can grab an arm and pull it toward you and get a foot on their, either on their hips here and you can kind of stretch them out. Ooh, yeah. And as you stretch them out, then you can pull and got, you, got, you got them out really easy. Or you got the guard, sorry, the full guard, and your legs crossed. So how that works, is if you're not playing the butterfly, where you're trying to get your feet, let's say they have their, well, if you're both sitting, it's kind of hard to do butterfly. But if they're on their knees, once they get to their knees, you can, you can pull your butterfly, you can put, just put your feet between their legs, and uh, they're probably not going to be standing so high, they'll probably be kind of sitting down more. But you just kind of have your feet kind of near their, near their back behind their knees. And then from here, you can actually work sweeps. You can, you know, grab this arm here and pull it down, and you can take this arm here and then you can sweep this leg over and take it over like that. So that's one thing that's at your disposal that you can do. But most, let's say you're both sitting, like I said, you're both like this in like style, and you're both coming towards you, you're, you're fighting. One thing I say you can do is you can try to grab both arms and pull them towards you, but they're going to and come here and put your feet on your on your hips and then push out. It has to be fast because they're going to try to stink out. If they, don't, and if they don't know what they're doing and they don't stink out, they just push all the way back like this. And then what they do is come forward and now you have them in guard. All right? So if they're here though and they pull their arms out, put your arms out, please. All right? So they, I mean, come on, do how you're supposed to do it. Snake. All right? So if they pull their arms out like that, if they pull their arms out like that now, this space right here, doesn't really serve, I can still push, but it doesn't really serve too much purpose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna immediately pull my legs back. I have to pull my, pull my own leg back into, into position like this because I'm, I'm vulnerable to leg locks. So one example would be if they have their legs up, Indian, Indian style, I don't know why you're sitting like that. So if she, if she has my arms and she pushes on my hips, now she stretches me out, boom, all she's doing is let go like over, let her feet side, sideways on my back, boom, and she can pull herself in and pull me into guard. Okay, now, if for whatever reason she has her feet on my hips, she's holding my hands, she's trying to pull and stretch me out, I sink around and happen to get out, I can grab an ankle. That's why I immediately want to pull your legs back. Right? So if you don't pull your legs back, I can cut, they can come here, they can pinch your foot, and it's really hard to get out of this. And then all I have to do, and then all I have to do is put their foot right here. And take the other foot and put it up and over the leg. 
I can pull that foot aside. I can step in tight here. There's one way to do it. I can pull this in tight here and here, and I can come back on that foot, and I can start turning this way as I'm holding, as I'm holding her hips down. I can also do the other way. I can also come in across her leg this way, have my other foot hooked on inside. I can walk her leg this way, and then I just have to lean back. Oh, you went back way too fast. <laughs> That's how I let go. I let go because I can feel like felt it. Hard. Anyway, you want to hold the with your armpit. You're holding her heel like this and up and over, so she can't get her foot out. And then you're you're here, up and over. And then you just want to pull them. You want to pull back. Tap my leg when you want to tap. Tap my leg. <laughs> Try to hold it. Make sure that when they tap you, they actually tap you somewhere. Like. And if they can't tap you somewhere, like when you're passing with your partner, say hey. Either physically smack me like twice so I know that you're tapping, or say tap. Right? So you gotta be hang on. If they're getting choked, they might as well say tap. And so you know they might you know yeah. they might better try to hit you somewhere. Um, or you mean if they can't do nothing else, then you just like stop or something. Um, but anyway, you should you should know to only hold the choke for so long anyway. So you want to get tight here, hold this here, hold this here, come back, lean to your side. And then you're going to pull back. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of ways to learn. I'm not trying to show you how to do this technique. I'm just showing you that's something you can get caught in. So the second you're here, and you manage to, let's say, pull two on one even, and you have two on one's better than holding, than holding both arms. Two on one here behind the shoulder, or behind the elbow, and on the wrist, and then push their hips out, stretch them out, and then simply let your feet slide off of them and keep pulling them in. Boom, like that, how you got them with the guard. Okay, so that's one way. You can go from sitting down. So either try to go for that, so as you're fist fighting, and you're knocking hands off. So when they, when they grab this arm here, they're trying to go over. Remember, push their shoulder, and immediately come back in and grab this arm. Now you have, now you have a good grip here. From here, you can, always, you can already start to pull. So as you're going through this fighting stage, and you're grabbing their head. If they grab your head, pull my head down, protect your neck. This arm right here is protecting my neck for a second. Just in case they decide to shoot around for not even play the wrong area. They're trying to shoot around for the team. I have protection here. Now I can I can grab this hand and I can pull it off my head like that. So show this hand right here, our guilty team. Oh, I'm protecting, see? That way they can't guilty me. Then I can take this hand and pull it out. Now I have two on one. And with two on one, I can immediately come back, and I can just, if I, have, like if I do it fast enough, I can just pull them into my, into my guard like that, boom. But if they're, if they're really resisting, then I can push on their hips and stretch them out, and then let go like that, and then pull them and try to get a foot on here, and then try to get a foot over like that. They might be trying to fight that, so as you're pushing them, your feet down, let's say they're trying to get the arm out, Pull the arm out. They pull the arm out. From here, you want to sit right back up and pull your legs back in. If they happen to grab one of your feet, grab your own foot, two on one, and pull your foot back. Grab their head. Start. If you need, you know how to do the guillotine. Learn, look up how to do it. So go for a guillotine now. If not, just hold on to your foot and let them have it. It's just hot it too. The guillotine. Yeah. Just hold on to your hold on to your foot. Don't let them have it, and then uh, go from there. Really quickly, we're going to go turn that arm off. Turn that arm off real quick. So again, if you start from here, the other option you have, besides pulling guard, I want you to pull guard, remember, from guard, just watch that one part, how to go from guard to mount. You want to stay in mount. Full mount, you want to, you want to tire them out, and then try to go for Americana. That's your whole goal as a beginner for right now. As you start to learn other, other things, Try to learn more defenses, how to get out of things. So you're going to find yourself getting into a lot of different positions you don't want to be in. You want to learn how to get out of those positions. For example, learn how to get out, learn at least one way, one reliable way to get out of the back mount when they have the choke and they have you on the side. One easy way is sliding your shoulders off into the ground and turning into them. But we kind of show, I kind of showed that earlier in the video, but just make sure you have a way to get out of every major position. I didn't show... I had to get out of everything. The back mount was really the only thing that we showed how to get out of. Other stuff kind of we went through because that cycle shows you how to get pretty much out of everything, except for the back mount. 
Um, anyway, just watch more videos on the back mount escapes. All right, so the other thing I want to try to do is if you can get a two-on-one, so let's say they grab this wrist, you're, you're swimming out, you're swimming around, and they grab your elbow, immediately push on that shoulder, get your arm out. Now from here, watch, if you grab this arm, you can slide this right to a two-on-one, you can pull them toward you. Now it, another kind of drag and pull you can do when you drag and pull them, is pull them across like this. You gotta got show some resistance, okay? Oh, sorry, I was just letting you show up and demonstrate. So I'm gonna pull them across like that. And immediately I wanna come in here and hug them tight, over and under. I wanna pull them to a back position. Right, I wanna try to take the back. Now if you're not comfortable with the rear naked choke yet, then there's kind of no point to taking the back if you don't know how to do any submissions from it. Because from the back it's kind of hard to go from the back mount to some, something else. So if you wanna try a transition from the back mount, so let's say you get the back mount, you're like, yeah, I'm at the back mount, but you don't know how to probably do the choke and it's not working, they strip your arms off. They then turn around and now they're in your, now they'll be, if they, if they don't, most likely if they happen to turn around and get, and turn around, they're gonna get into your, into your guard, your full, your full guard right here, boom. From here, this is fine, this is what we wanna be anyway, because then you trap an arm, you trap a leg, you take the other foot to the ground, on the inside of their foot, and you, push here, and then you bridge off that foot, and, you, and, you, and you, as you're bridging, you're going off the shoulder, and then you're pulling them over like that, and then you're getting into the full mount. Boom. So, if you do happen to take the back, then do, and you don't know what to do, and the choke doesn't work, then you know you can at least let them turn into your guard. Um, other things, if you're holding this here, just taking a breather, you know, you're, just like, you're kind of resting for a second, see what they're going to do. They're going to be trying to strip this arm out, just so you know. They're going to be trying to pull and strip that arm. When they do, you can try to get this arm deeper, then they're, then they're going to start trying to strip this arm. And as they start trying to strip that arm, they're going to start turning into you. Like. This way. From here, you can just follow them and try to, try to modify and keep this position if you want. But unless you know how to do here, try to go for arm bar, or try to turn it to some other thing, then it's probably best just to let them turn around into your guard. So just try to make it sure that as they're turning around, that you keep your feet close so when they're turning into you, you turn, turn into me? As they're turning into you, you want to keep your feet around them the whole time so that now they're in your guard. And then from the guard, they're going to try to posture up. When they posture up, you want to try to bring them back down. So you can come here, and come and hold them, and bring them back to here. And then you're going to have an arm trapped. Once the arm's trapped, the leg's trapped, and then you go on your bridge up, and you push, and you pull the arm at the same time. So I'm going to take this leg, I'm going to chop the leg, and I'm going to push my head so close to the wall, I can't do it. But I'm going to push it with my head to the wall. So you want to push off this foot here. You can come here at this point and push off and over and then come over here and then back. So it's a fine sequence now. Another thing that you can do is go back to the seated position. I'm going to show you the most, these are the things that you're going to be starting with every time you're sparring here. You're back in this position here. And so you want to learn how to, what you can do in this position. How to defend yourself and what to do. If they just like straight come right at you, all their body weight, boom, they're just trying, they're trying to smash against you. At this point, immediately, just get your feet up onto their hips here. Boom, feet onto the hips as they're smashing you, so that you can easily come into guard. From guard, again, you already know how to try to get into full mount. From full mount, you know, if you watch the whole video, you know how to control full mount, tire them out, and then go for some, and go for a marathon. The other thing, you're fighting. And I want to show different ways to fight off different positions. So they grab a wrist. This is all for no gi, by the way. They grab a wrist. They grab. They grab. Uh, let's say over and under, and they try. And they start pulling me. When they pull me, again, you want to push with the arm for just a second. I like to push the arm that, that's close to me. Boom, like that. Push it for a second, and then do a round the world. Palm up. Grab their wrist now. Pull their shoulders still, pull them toward you, and 
secure them for a second. Now they're going to try to pull your arm off and get out, and then you pull them toward you. And you can try to start coming this way and, and tacking their side back here like this, forcing them to, like you're holding their hips in here. Now they might, they might do all kinds of unpredictable things, but most likely what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to prevent you from taking their back, so they're going to try to turn into you and get you into guard. And that's when you want to control this leg, they can't get you to guard. So when you're holding them here, like this, be, be careful with your back leg. Here, let's go this way. When you're controlling them like this, be careful that this leg over here is going to try to take your back. And so you can immediately step on the other side of that leg and then hold it and come this way and start stepping behind them. At least now you're behind them. So now you're in a better position. You still have the seatbelt, you're behind them. Don't just pull them right to the ground right now. Just kind of stay here for a second, see what they do. Give you a chance to try to get your hooks in. Right? So this is a position you could start in. You can start, you can start attempting to learn the choke and start trying to apply it here for a second, give them some pressure, give them something to think about, and then they're, they're going to try to turn into, into you. And then that's when you can go ahead and shoot your legs out and go for a guard. I don't know, I'm talking about me. So everything I'm doing here is to either get them into, I'm trying to pull them across into a guillotine if you know how to do it, or to hold them here and try to apply a guillotine. Again, look how to do a guillotine if you want to try, if that's something you want to attempt to do, it's a, it's a good time to do it. So. Learn, learn some videos. There's tons of ways to learn how to apply the guillotine. All right, so anyway, that's all for now. That's the basics you need to know when you're in that, sh that fighting. The, the, main, the main goal is as you twist around, grab a wrist, double, pull them into your guard, or pull them into a back mount, and then from there, either let them turn into your guard or try to, try to attempt a seatbelt hold there, and then let them turn into guard if you don't have to do a choke, or even try to apply the choke doesn't work, let them turn around into your guard. Keep your legs tight. The other thing is just pull them into your guard. The other thing is push them into your, your full, um, your first point, your first line of defense, your feet and your legs. So you're pushing your hips out and you're pulling an arm, two on one, and you're pushing their hips out and wrapping around like I showed you to get the, uh, to get the mount that way. Not the mount, sorry, get the guard. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Those are, their, those are the three main things you're trying to do. Just 30 simple things you're, you're attempting to do. So, really quick big overview here. The three things you're attempting to do from here as you're wrist fighting is you're trying to get a two on one. So, you're, you're going to grab the wrist here, grab the wrist here, and pull, and then get, and get, in, and then so first I pull here, and then I slide up the arm behind the, behind the elbow, makes it harder for them to get away. I slip my foot here to their hip, I start to push their hip back, creating some space. This makes it really hard for them to do anything. Try to do something. And then once I do, I can get them into my full guard. So that's one option. The other option to do that is just to straight, you're fighting here, and as you're fighting, you're fighting, and they're trying to, you know, you can grab your head, whatever, they get out, you grab the two arms, pull, and you immediately come right to the, you can push on the head, so you see who's pulling right into your guard. The other one is as you're fighting, and they grab a two and one on you, Boom, remember, push, take this arm, swing it around, so you can grab this wrist. This is kind of hard to see, so I'm pushing here. Imagine this arm's still here. This arm, they have two on one. This arm circles around so I can grab their wrist and it's kind of twisted. This arm is already here, remember? Now I just slide it down to the elbow. I pull them fast to here. Now I can come in and start taking like a side back control. And then I can start working that in. Now from here, they might actually try to twist all the way over. It's fine, they're going to twist right to your back control. Now if they're smart, they're going to try to twist the other way. And as they do, you want to follow them, and you want to put this foot over here. Now they can try to get your hooks back in. Come in up here, now you're here. And you just sit on the butt right here. And you can come in for a seatbelt, and then you can get your get a hook in. Come in for a seatbelt here, and then you can break, or you can even grab their arm, double arm take in, and as I do this, I'm going to have to do this slow because I don't want to hurt her. Now you have an arm trapped when you come into your foot. Now I have an arm trapped here. So then I can come up while I'm holding this arm. I can start bringing this arm in, let go of the arm, come around and go around and make a chuck. 
So those are just some things to work on. But just work on, maybe work on those three things. Those are the three things that you really want to try to do. You want to try to get, get double arm control. That's your main goal. Um, if you learn a good guillotine, you can attempt that. So if you learn a good guillotine, you can attempt to reach in and pull them like this. And instead, instead, when they try to pull their arm, they're going to try to, you know, they're going to try to sink arm around. Instead, pull your arm on, the, on this side and around and grab the head this way. You can actually do it from grabbing your own arm as well. You can still pull the guillotine. Um, that's if you practice guillotine, but anyway, the main thing is you want to practice is those three things that I showed you. Practice those three things, work on those three things, and your whole entire, this whole entire game will seem totally different. Other things you can do too, as they start scooting towards you, like this, and you x you can just push their knees. <laughs> and don't let them, you can just you know, push their knees here, and you prevent them, and then you know, push their knee, and then swing your arm. Grab their double, pull them in, to some kind of control here, where you have a control. Now you can try to push it to the side, and then now you got side control. Boom. Okay, so and that's just that one's a little different than most. You don't want to go through it, so I don't want to go to give you too much overload. But that is another way you can go from here. But basically, just keep in mind that you can do little pushes against the knee right here because your arm's still tight. What you don't want to do right now is push against here because you are vulnerable to attack. But you can swing their legs up right here and pull you into an arm. I just don't know how to do it, but it really sucks. And so, I, um, I would block it by defending that foot right there, by the way. Like like, ah, 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 right. oh, no, I have a little. Ah. I have no idea what I'm doing. Ah. Did you hear? So, notice I just stay patient. I'm not in no danger, I know they can't choke me, so. Yeah. Jump, jump, jump. It's not working. <laughs> so, I just stay patient here. I'm going to eventually get into a better position. I'm just holding the side control. Now yeah, I got pulled out. So sometimes just being very patient is important, but you don't want to be patient when they have you in a really bad position. You want to get out of that position. You also don't want to be patient when you're in the fist fighting stage. Not fist fighting, when you're in the, uh, the hand fighting stage. That's not, I mean, you want to be patient, but you want to, you don't want to just sit there forever. You're, that's when you're expending your energy. That's when you're trying to pull them into one of those three positions. Either pull them to where your feet are on their hips, you want to stretch them out so you can get to the guard, or just pull them right into your guard, or pull them into kind of space. So thank you for watching. Go ahead and leave your comments in the video what you think of this. Let me know if this gets you back into jiu-jitsu, or if they helped you jiu-jitsu. Or just um, like the video? Yeah, just like the video. Try to find a training partner and, uh, and then go through those drills and all the drills in this video. Go through everything in this video. Practice as much as you can. Matter of fact, just watch this video. Just that hand fighting thing and those, you don't need a partner for that. Just, just watch this video and then going into, going into your next Jiu Jitsu practice and when you're rolling with someone, you're like, hey, I just wanna, I just wanna kind of practice on my defense. If you just, Take one of the, try to do one of those three things as you're doing, uh, doing the snaking and then grab the arm, they grab a double, you do a push, a snake grab, double pull drag, and pull them into one of your positions that I taught you, one of those three things, and then work from there. And I guarantee your, your whole entire game will be that much stronger. Like, wow, that was, that was pretty cool. And then once they, if they start to smash you, now you at least you know your defenses, your three points defenses, and then how to shrimp out of it. So that last point of defense, I want to just go over that one one more time. And then if I run out of space, space holy, just, just remember that. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And going back right for a second. You want me to be part so of it? Or you they smashed me all the way down. My last point of defense now is my, my elbows. Remember, you're stripping off this foot, the one that's farthest away from the opponent smashing you. So they're smashing me on the side of your view. They're smashing me on this side. So this is the leg I'm going to jump off on the shoulder. So I'm pressing this against their throat. If I can, I, if they're smashing me, always get your arms in tight and so we can press against their throat. There's many other advanced ways to get out. This is a, this is a simple way you can learn it. I'm gonna take this foot and lift up and shrimp out and get your knee back in. And then turn in and get this foot back in. Now you get butterfly guard and then move back to guard. Right, so that's how you get out of them smashing against you. 
And then once you got guard, you know how to flip it back in to where you're in full mount. Ah, uh, my hair's all sweaty and dumb. That's okay. Good. We've been recording for a super long time, even before this. I uh, lost a lot of videos, so. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Woo! Thumbs Thank up. You. Thumbs up the video. Double peace. <laughs> we appreciate it. Oh, of course, only if you truly believe in thumbs up because it's good or whatever. Helps you out. And uh, definitely try try this. Now you know the basics. And now that you know the basics, it should really help you game. And now you shouldn't get totally smashed and beat up in, in sparring and, uh, and rolling in jiu-jitsu. And if this does help you, please come back. I mean, I, I don't expect to get, you know, it's probably take a week or so before I start getting comments like, hey, I tried that out in the in the uh, gym or the dojo, whatever. I'm trying out my, my uh, jiu-jitsu center. And um, I did way better. Before, I, I was just getting smashed. I had no idea what was going on. Now I had a, I was able to stay somewhat patient. I had a, I had a decent idea what was going on. Um, the beginning game was totally different. They, you know, I, I managed to get a, a pull and I managed to slide them into my guard. And that was awesome. And then they got right out of it and they got me some arm bar or whatever. Um, but at least you got you were better than before. Now you understand what's happening and what they're going for. If you want to see more videos about the most basic fundamental stuff of what to watch out for, because a lot of videos teach you how to transition on that, but they don't only really teach you what to watch out for, you know, to know when they're going for something else and how to defend it. Like, oh, they're doing this movement, I know they're going for something else. And then how to defend that. I can make some future videos on some more basic stuff that would pertain to that. But again, thanks for watching. Double peace. Go in like this. Ah!